He's a violin prodigy. Her full name is Maggie V. Stallion. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. The 49ers favored in the Super Bowl, Perloff, but should they be? Hey, welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. Just outside Perloff talking to former NFL MVP Boomer Esiason. Yeah, what does Boomer got? Well, I said to him, why are the 49ers still favored in this game when you have Patrick Mahomes on the other side? And one thing he said was that he believes the public believes so much in the 49ers because what they've seen all season, the offensive weapons, when you match them up, more offensive weapons for the 49ers than there are for the Kansas City Chiefs, despite the fact that the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. So I think the question is, how much is Mahomes himself worth in this game in terms of making up for, let's say, the lack of weapons, but the weapon, the the in the the deficiency between the amount of awesome weapons for the 49ers and the lack of awesome weapons, at least in volume, for the Kansas City Chiefs? I mean, if this becomes a shootout, that plays it's not gonna be Mahomes is gonna out weapon or out game. I mean, they have to slow down the game because of those weapons. The Chiefs want to do exactly what they did to the Ravens, right? They wanted to uh, slow down the game, run the ball, keep it out of that offensive hands. I I think it's a little more than that, too. I think people are, as you said, remembering Purdy during the regular season. Think about the Ravens loss, right? Purdy and the Niners moved right down the field. Every drive in the first half, they just threw interceptions at the wrong moments. So I think there's this, I think we, I, I agree with what you said. We know what Niners offense can do when it's at its peak. And we know the Chiefs offense is not doing that at its peak. There's right. every even the Buffalo game, they weren't as quick strike. They were played a nice ball control game. They're just not an explosive offense anymore. So if it becomes a shootout, I mean it's a big favor for the Niners, right? It is, but again, you have Patrick Mahomes who is generally worth a couple points on a spread, I think every week just by the by who he is. And I think it's interesting in this game, he's not getting that love. He's not getting that, uh, unless you think the spread would be even bigger without Patrick Mahomes, but he's not getting that sort of bump or tilt in the market just by virtue of him being there. Maybe that's because we saw in the second half of that Ravens game, he didn't do a lot. He didn't. Yeah. He game managed. He didn't have to do much. He's but checked down Pat now. <laughs> yeah, right. I do remember, except for the throw to MVS. Yes. Is he even trying to throw the ball downfield? Not really. Isn't it amazing? You have this Mr. Irrelevant who's five foot nothing, who's out there pushing the ball downfield, and the greatest quarterback of all time is playing like Rich Gannon. I mean, he is throwing <laughs> screen pass after screen pass to and Kelsey. So well, it was also different because Purdy was behind by three scores and Mahomes was up by uh, yeah. ten points. Yeah, right? but Brock Purdy leads the league in yards per attempt by a large margin, where Patrick Mahomes has all of a sudden become this really conservative quarterback. Now, of course, I'm not saying that I give the edge to Purdy in this quarterback matchup, but come on, if if we're going to get into a car chase here, if it's going to be a high scoring game. The Niners have every advantage, and I think that's – I kind of see it too. And also I think that Brock Purdy is a complete unknown. If if he's really calm and cool and doesn't throw that early pick, I think the Chiefs have a problem with that offense. What do you think – we're talking about the matchup between the 49ers and the Chiefs, obviously, but why the 49ers are still favored in this game despite the fact – that you've got Patrick Mahomes for the Kansas City Chiefs. And, by the way, the Chiefs have the better defense. Now, that's another part, and I I know you have a thought on this. This might be something that's a little bit more, I don't want to say reputation, Mm. or just what we saw in the regular season. The Chiefs' defense, we're just not used to the defense leading the way. But that's how it's been all year long, Yeah. despite the fact that Mahomes and Kelsey get all the attention. Then you have the 49ers, whose defense was really great all year, but in these playoffs have allowed so many yards on the ground. They have not been themselves. No, it is bizarre. But if you think about we're talking about the spread, the public idea, I I don't think you can erase your image of that Niners defense over the last two years. And you see the stars and you think they're great. You're right. The public perception is the Chiefs, our Patrick Mahomes team and the Niners are a Nick Bosa defense team. Yeah, right. And it's been it's the exact it opposite. But how can they get so much worse against the run in in the postseason? It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, they have Eric Armstead, Javon Hargrave, Nick Bosa, 
Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, they these Added people. Chase Young, I know people aren't enamored uh, with him right now, yeah, but it's I, another body on the defensive line. How can they not tackle running backs? What is going on? It's just it's hard to wrap your head around. Do well, you understand? I don't. And you know, if you listen to what these players are saying, they're not really giving you much, which I don't. I don't blame them. But it almost feels like it's a coming out flat footed or something, or like not expect. I don't know how you wouldn't expect that the Lions are going to run on you. I mean, what else do they do? Uh, <laughs> they, they run and they they throw the ball to St. Brown and, and to Laporta. I, I think that they're, you're never going to have a come out flat moment, though, when it's the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, they were actually, this is interesting. The Niners were third in the entire NFL in rush defense this year, 89 yards per game. Yeah. Nobody could. And they, a lot of that is because they were up. Their offense was so good. She so had to pass the ball. That's true. But they, they were kind of a brick wall. So, I, I think everyone says, well, the Niners just calm down and play their normal game. They're a better team than the Chiefs. I can buy that argument. Now, that being said, we all know that's not how things work because the pressure of this is uh, will affect the Niners. The Chiefs feel like they're the established team here. I don't know. The Niners were just here. I yeah. mean, they were here Super Bowl 54. I know Purdy wasn't with them, but now Purdy's played in a couple really big games, mm. and quite frankly, he's been the difference in some of these games, especially that final drive against Green Bay and the second half against the Detroit Lions. I mean, he he kept the comeback going. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, he's been great in the fourth quarter. Now now yeah. make the whole plane out of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so the question about, about defensively, right, how the Chiefs are going to try to attack the 49ers, mm-hmm. is this can't be a same game plan that they had for Lamar Jackson, or can it be? Why not? The Ravens were trying to run the ball, right? And Spagnolo, the defensive coordinator for the Chiefs, basically shut that out and shut that down for Lamar Jackson. So, yeah, the, that's the thing about the Niners are a little different than the Ravens. I think, and I think I wish I had seen this coming in. They came into the Ravens game and said, they watched the Texans game against Lamar Jackson and said, they don't pass, they threw for 150 yards. Let's make them get uncomfortable and pass. Yeah. So we're going to stuff the run and not let Gus Edwards go downhill. So, that's the thing about the Niners. It's not as easy. What do you what do you knock out? What's the thing that you knock out for the Niners? Obviously, I think Christian McCaffrey, which is very hard to do. But then do you open up the game for Kittle and Debo? Yeah, I mean, let's not forget how pivotal Debo Samuel was in the comeback also. Huge. He didn't get a lot of Huge. the headlines on this, but it was his yards after the catch. It was him making plays along with Purdy with his legs that allowed them to get back to McCaffrey in a way that, you know, got the 49ers back on schedule. So, I don't know, EJ, you got a thought? Why are the 49ers still favored in this game? I think a lot of it comes down to the overall talent profile of the 49ers versus the Chiefs. Right. Like we know the Kansas City Chiefs and the team they have, they are battle-tested, they are tough, clearly, but they're just not as talented as the 49ers. I mean, you know, the receiving core is Rushy Rice, Kelsey, and then say a prayer if the ball goes to anybody else. Yeah. Um, you know, in the so deep- you think it's a on paper, the 49ers look like the more talented team, but how do you account for the Mahomes aspect of that? I think the I, I, it's a good, I think that's honestly why the game, the spread has been as close as it is. I, I think otherwise, if this was even a slightly lesser quarterback than Mahomes, I think the mm. Niners are probably four and a half point favorites, honestly. Well, uh, everything you just said about San Francisco and the Chiefs, could you have said the same thing about Baltimore and the Chiefs? And a little bit, I honestly feel like the Chiefs have beaten two better teams. Uh, teams are better on paper. They won in Buffalo. So you can look at the matchups. You can look at the numbers. The fact is the Chiefs, uh, I don't even know how they did against Baltimore. It feels like they, the Ravens they, they, were even better. They bad. made Lamar the Ravens, play a game he didn't want to play. The Ravens were actually way better than the Niners, and they immediately took them out of their game. Man, now, first of all, I, my original pick, like every single other media member, was the Chiefs. I got to tell you, I'm wavering. I am wavering towards these Niners. Shocker. Mr. Two- Bandwagon is wavering. <laughs> well, I, because it's two weeks, and this is all about game prep. I just don't think Steve Spagnuolo is going to have such an obvious answer because the Niners can hit you in five different ways. Yeah. Here's the thing. Do you really, are you going to walk in on Sunday morning and say, I am betting on Brock Purdy not to throw an interception. That is like, will this kid be able to do it? I don't think any X's and O's or matchup or game plan. Does that guy have the stones to come out on Super Bowl Sunday against the defending champion and play his best game? I get that. Can I ask something? I I think I know the answer to this, and it might be obvious, and maybe I'm the idiot here, but Brock Purdy has already played now in two NFC Championship games. Got hurt last year, obviously. Right. Played this year. Playing in these high-profile games. This game's watched by 50 million people. I know this is different because it's the Super Bowl, but 
haven't you played in? You get it. it the, the thing about the Super Bowl that's different, and Tom Brady has talked about this a lot, is how long the game is. That's the thing that you can't get used to, where the halftime show is you're sitting there for probably 30, 35 minutes. You know, all the commercial breaks are longer. Everything about it is just longer. I mean, the national anthem and God bless America and goodness knows what else. That part of it is the is the toughest to account for. But don't you feel like Purdy's kind of been on the big stage for a while? Yeah, for but a while, his, two years. But he was up in the uh, Green Bay game and he threw what should have been a pick six early in the game. Something through a pick that got dropped against the yeah, Lions. Yeah, he's, he's been a little bit off on this big stage. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's been the same player from the regular season. Uh, once they start things, when they get a lead and they can do play action, forget it. They're unbeatable. Yeah. The the problem is the Chiefs have been so good about jumping out and getting the lead, and they like playing from ahead. So we'll see which Brock Purdy comes. I think there's an early pick. I do think he's going to have some nerves. I mean, okay. come on. I know, but it's a Super sorry. Bowl, Maggie. Again, I know I might sound a little naive here, but the NFL is so big right now in this country. It's covered. It's overcovered. You know, we talk about it every day. We love it. But you, you're you exposed already to a lot of haters, naysayers, people who love you. You you get all that with, you know, Brock Purdy is you know, one of the more, I, weirdly, I don't want to say he's a polarizing figure, but he's one of the weird, like, you know, Rorschach test kind of what you what you see is different than what I see. He's been talked about quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, going back to yesterday's show, I don't think this is a, a quarterback versus quarterback matchup at all. Like, they're just so... It's basically going to be who can get control of this game, probably on the ground to start, right? right. Isn't that way more... Both teams want, desperately want to play from the lead. Baltimore, you saw when they were down 10 points, they went into pure panic Seven mode. Seven points. They yeah, they couldn't come back. Yeah, I think it's interesting. One thing about the Niners is they've shown they can come from behind too. That might be a, affecting spread. So if they're down ten, they're not going to panic because they've been doing it the last two weeks. Well, uh, the, I yeah. guess the more dangerous place for the 49ers with Kyle Shanahan is up ten points. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a great point. <laughs> if you're if you, had to say it. if you bet the Niners and they're down twenty eight to fourteen, you're like, oh, okay, I feel good. If they're up twenty eight fourteen, man, you're sweating. I do, uh, think, I do think the one thing about that dynamic, if they do get down in this game, is we've seen who, them. Come, who gets down? Oh, uh, sorry, the Niners. Okay, is we've seen them make these comebacks sure. against subpar defenses. I mean, the Packers defense has played well in big yeah. spots, but over the totality of the season was not good. They just fired their DC and the fans are rejoicing. Lions have a really good defensive coordinator, but a team that has given up a lot of big plays throughout the season. Great point. Can you get behind 10 points against that Chiefs defense? I think that yeah. if there's anything Vegas is under, underestimating, I'm not sure if it's even Pat Mahomes or the offense. I think it's the defense. Right. They have two elite corners. Uh, Sneed is an absolute bully. McDuffie's an all-pro. Uh, you talk about Chris Jones. Carl Loftus is a star that I think a lot of people don't realize how dominant he is on the front first line. First-round pick. Yeah, I mean, he's a first-round pick. I mean, they, they have stars everywhere, too. I just don't think that because they're not the household names that Warner, Greenlaw, Bosa, Armstead are on the uh, – and Chase Young on the 49ers, they don't get the kind of respect. But if you're the Niners, I don't know if you can get behind 10, 14 points and think that you can just step back with Purdy and just throw the ball over the yard and win. Yeah, but yeah. those cornerbacks, who are they even covering in this game? I mean, you're, the Niners are going to hit you with Kittle and Debo. Debo, and who even – the Niners can neutralize. Their three greatest strengths don't even really go out against cornerback. McCaffrey's oh, never going to be covered by a cornerback. It was a problem Ayuk, in that last game. And yeah, so they'll they'll probably neutralize Ayuk. I would maybe go under on him because they could put one of those corners. But that doesn't, those guys aren't going to help you on Kittle. Also, the Debo factor, you have to admit, there's one thing they have that Buffalo did not have and certainly Baltimore didn't have. That safety valve of a guy who's going to break three tackles on third and four. I, I think I think San Francisco is a little different. I think they're a bigger challenge to Kansas City, and you, they don't really know what they have in Purdy. So it's going to be a different game. I think their defense is not. It, it, they can't hold San Francisco to ten points after holding ball. It can't be that good of a defense. I know what you're saying. Carl Loftus is great. It might be. <laughs> Carl Loftus is great. I don't think they're that good. That's just impossible. This is. They're not the doomsday defense. They're not the purple people either. There's no way. There's no way they can do this again. Two games in a row. Also, we did get, speaking of purple people, it made me think of it. We did get an update on what the uniforms are going to be. We have some details on some of the more little intricacies of the Super Bowl, which came out yesterday, I believe. So we've got that information for you as well. Um, also, I love this comment in the chat coming from Jesus, who said, Maggie, the playoffs are different than the regular season. Team adjustments are so vital. Who's going to make the adjustment in game and which coaching staff do you believe 
will assess and be able to make those mm. adjustments quicker and and make the better adjustments. Well, yeeks, because you got you got Kyle Shanahan <laughs> on one side, and you got Andy Andy Reid's adjustment. He'll use his timeouts too early, and who knows? <laughs> I mean, the two great coaches who game management is probably their biggest weakness, right? It's crazy. They great scheme, great game plan. But again, who's going to make the adjustments and who's not going to make the big mistake? What well, the Great adjustment question. against the Ravens for the Chiefs was hold on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It always reminds me of someone who's water skiing and they the skis go out from under them, but they're still hanging on to the rope. <laughs> and the, the, yeah. Anyway, 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. All right, it's Friday. We've got so much for you, including some major news on the coaching front in the NFL. We've got college coaching news also. Remember college football? We've got that for you, too. 855-212-4CBS. Maggie and Perloff. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining.
45 seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Westwood One for free, sponsored by AutoZone. All season long, you can listen to every Westwood One broadcast of the NFL live on the NFL app by asking Alexa to open Westwood One Sports or on the Odyssey app. Get in the zone, AutoZone. AutoZone's free battery testing and charging is available for free at your local AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Restrictions apply. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. We're talking about perceptions and Super Bowl and the stickiness of the idea that the 49ers defense is elite. Even though we haven't seen it on the field, and also, the, on the flip side, the, the Chiefs are this high-octane offense yeah. and their defense is whatever. It's amazing how these perceptions are almost exactly the opposite of what we're seeing on the NFL field. Yeah, you're right. It's reputation. Yeah, So, and I think often betting is based on reputation because the Buffalo Bills have been uh, third favorite in the NFL for five years. <laughs> Why did my team have to catch and astray? The other one, I was just talking about the Phoenix Suns seem to be sticky in the top three in NBA odds. Like, what are people seeing there? It's just reputation, reputation, reputation. I think it's hard to open your mind to new ideas. This idea that San Francisco is not a lead on defense and Kansas City is. It's its hard to do. Okay, well, at least I'll defend the 49ers that we have seen them be good on defense this year, just not lately. Yeah. You know, that's the part of it. The Chiefs offense has been struggling through most of the year, but we I, I, I feel like it was not a figment of my imagination that the 49ers defense was good against the run. They were a good team yeah. uh, as a really uh, good defense. I know there was issues with Steve Wilkes and they had to move them from the booth down to the field, but they at least were good earlier this year, but I get the reputation. Uh, let's go to the phones. 855-212-4CBS. Sam is in North Carolina. Good morning, Sam. What's up? Good morning. How you guys doing? Well, as a Niners fan, I'm a little surprised by the point spread, too. Okay. <laughs> and, and <laughs> uh, you know, pick them at best. But, you know, I, I got to tell you, I'm less concerned about Brock putting the offense. I love our depth all around. We have a lot of depth. But Steve Wilkes and the defense is a problem. And part of it is a lack of talent and scheme. We've been worried about that defensive line all year. And you notice we, made, we brought in a lot of guys throughout the season. Chase Young is horrific against yeah. the run. And when – and it is lane discipline, the bump tackling, you know, Randy Gregory was better value. I don't know if you guys noticed in the last game, but we play eight deep on that defensive line. We played a steady four who got a lot of reps, and it really hurt us. Steve Wilkes is way too passive and way yeah. too slow with adjustments, and we are horrific on third down and 50. We couldn't stop anybody with this guy. <laughs> oh, Sam, and, uh, feel your pain. It's, it's, yeah, it's, the, the bad it's, one, it's especially for bad. Chase Young, was the was it the Jameer Gibbs touchdown yeah. where he runs it oh. in, and Gibbs is, like, shocked that he's in the end zone. He's like, wait a minute, is anyone going to try to yeah. tackle me on this one? But listen, 49ers got the last laugh, so. Well, we did, but you know, on third and thirteen, you guys got your guys back there uh, at, uh, at the you know the down markers. We need to. We're going to have to really make some adjustments, and I would love to see us go back to our platoon system on that D line because yeah. it, it absolutely was horrific. I will tell you, um, our depth though on the offensive side is. I actually expect us to, to use some role players, guys who've been on the bench a few times. I, I do think with Purdy, the one thing you do want him to get off. To, to a good start. But that being said, the kid, he's had his moments, but he never drives it off the cliff. Right. You know, he always seems to, <laughs> wow. seems to be able to gather himself. Yeah. He does seem to gather himself. That's a good way to put uh, it. Sam, except the Ravens <laughs> game. He drove well, right off the cliff. <laughs> the four interception <laughs> yeah. game. Sam, yeah. thank you so much. Great points all around. I like a couple of things that he said yeah. and, and bringing up some old stuff, but relevant from the NFC Championship game. Is there anything as a fan 
that you makes you sicker to your stomach than when you have a third and long yeah. and the team hands off and they end up picking up the first down oh. on a long run. It is sickening yeah. to watch that when your defense gives up a long run for a first down. Yeah, I mean, there isn't their best third and ten strategy to hope that it hits the opposing receiver in the chest and he drops it because <laughs> that's the only thing that worked against the Lions was uh, Josh Reynolds dropping the football. That third down, exactly what I remember the 49ers defense just being terrifying. Uh, that on third and long, Nick Bosa was going to pin his ears back, and then somebody would come from the other side to come up the middle. What ha- Steve Wilkes has turned them into kittens. I don't understand what's happening. To be there. honest, against your forty, against your Philadelphia Eagles, they were tough. I mean that that defense. You know, obviously Drake Greenlaw gets into it with Big Dom, the security guard. But I, I think oh my god, they, the defense was awesome in that game. But then last year in the NFC title game, Shane Steichen was able to pick them apart and get rid of the ball quickly. That's what Mahomes is going to do because he does not want to get sacked. Uh, Josh is in Harrisburg. Has a thought on the 49ers defense. Hey, Josh. Good morning. Hey, guys. Good morning. Um, yeah, I mean, after last week's crazy game against the Lions when I realized we'd be playing the Chiefs, um, I figured it'd be like a coin flip as far as who would be favored. Um, I do think Chase Young is catching a little bit of flack. When he first came over from the Redskins, he had some good games. I don't think he's had a bye because he got traded after our bye and before – um, Washington buys. So maybe he's just a little run down and needs needs some time off. And I think he might show up in the Super Bowl, hopefully. That's interesting. Josh didn't didn't factor that in, so thank you so much for the call. I mean, Perloff, you love saying people are tired. Yo, that's a 90% of the game right there is fatigue. Uh, I mean, look at the, thinks that his Eagles were tired from the Super Bowl the year before, but it didn't show up until you were 10-1. and 1. Well, I'll tell you right now, look at what happened to your Bills against the Chiefs. The Chiefs played earlier the week before. The Bills played got moved to Monday because oh. of weather, and they looked exhausted by the fourth quarter. So Don't get you, me started on the schedule losses. I'm telling you right now, that that is a factor. That's I know Andrew Bogus is here laughing at me, but fatigue definitely caught up with the Bills. If they'd had the same rest, who knows? Well, I, I got a lot of things to say about that, going back to the fact they had to play the Jaguars in London when the Jags had been there for two weeks. I'm glad Bogus is here because he needs to answer this as well. If you ever want to watch the show, you can listen to us. I mean, we sound amazing. We're obsessed with our affiliates, CBS Sports Radio across the country. Free Odyssey app, of course, is crystal clear to download. It sounds crystal clear. Sirius XM Channel 158. But you can also watch our show if you want to, which is YouTube.com slash CBS Sports Radio and Twitch.tv slash CBS Sports Radio. We have a chat. People are called the Weedos and the Coffee Drinkers because they're insane in the best way possible. Bucky Cheese is in the chat. So CBS Sports Radio canceled all single rooms. Now Perloff has to bunk with Gelb. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Super oh. Bowl room arrangements. Does Bucky Cheese know something that we don't? Okay, that is really interesting. Because yesterday, uh, our friends over at WFAN, Jerry Recco, was saying for years he had to bunk with Rich Ackerman. Whoa. <laughs> this was a big topic yesterday. Rich Ackerman, who does updates, uh, used to do it with the afternoon with us. Yeah. Now Rich is a germaphobe. Yes, he is. And according to the show, I'm not saying this, he is simultaneously a complete slob and a German <laughs> <Yes>. pope. <laughs> and will not tolerate infestation. <laughs> so, hey, how yes. does that... How, it makes no sense. He's happen? a hoarder, but he also basically comes in and sets fire to the workplace to scorch <laughs> off all germs from previous employees well, before he sits down and uses so I, that's how you. Die, that's how you kill everything. Yeah. So I definitely wouldn't want to... Rich is out. I also... Peter Schwartz is also apparently had a room with a lot of guys for the <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> Peter <laughs> Schwartz <laughs> <stepped in there. laughs> Peter Schwartz is too big to share a room with, right? Yeah. That'd be lower oh. on. <laughs> no, like how do you even like navigate through a room? Pete just takes up wow. a lot of space. He's tall. No, I mean, yeah, like you don't want if you if you're gonna room with somebody, you want a small person to room with, right? <laughs> Just big spoon, little spoon. <laughs> no, well, I'm saying Peter Schwartz when he goes to Radio Row probably gets confused like a retired offensive lineman. Man, the guy's a big dude. Big dude, yeah. Don't Matt you, Scott? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> is that you, Pete? I would definitely, I would have no problem with rooming with EJ, Bilotti, or Bogus. Aw. Basically, because they're, they're, you know, they're not as big as Pete. I mean, I'm a big guy, too. I'm 6'4". Like, I can see uh, getting out of bed in the morning and running right into Pete. (laughs) (laughs) Which is weird, because he's in the bed. Web and Yama? (laughs) Wait, wait, how would you? Who would be the dream? Now, this is one of the perks of being a woman working in sports. One of the detractors is, uh, or 
I don't know. One of the tough things is that you're basically the only woman. But the good thing about that <laughs> is that you get your own room. <laughs> Generally. I did have to room with some guys at college once when we were. That was weird. Now that I think back about it, that was probably not right. But yeah. we went to call the yeah. Atlantic 10 tournament with the college radio station. I had a room with two guys. That's okay. In college, that's kind of the way it goes. Yeah, I mean, no. I wasn't friends with them. It's still wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Wait. because we were, like, definitely paying a lot to go to that college. So you think they could have yeah. sprung for another hotel room in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, we, hey. <laughs> we had We had female staff members at Fordham, and if they traveled, they got their own room. And meanwhile, the rest of us, two, three, four dudes, were cramped into one tiny space. But that's yeah. the way it should be. Yeah. If it was flipped. It was a different it, era back then. Yeah. If it was flipped, it'd be the same way. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. I'm just going to tell a real quick story. Back in the day when I worked for the NFL, I worked with a woman producer. Yeah. And we got, our flight got canceled. So we had a layover in Las Vegas. And she goes, let's get a hotel room for a few hours to freshen up. She was married and I was single. I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> let's get a hotel room for a few hours. <laughs> it's and finally happening. It, it, it turned out there was absolutely like, my mind's like, well, listen, I, I don't know. I, 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 and she had no interest in me whatsoever. She literally wanted to get a hotel room and freshen up for a few hours. Yeah, right. Just take a nap. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah. When I hear, if you guys Bro, hear, let's get like a hotel in, room. In the next bed over, just like looking up at the ceiling. Where you, yeah. <laughs> or you like in your box or shorts as she came out of the, the bathroom like all right i'm ready he's like no yeah <laughs> right now that'll get you banned from the industry forever back then uh, it was an oopsie yeah wait, but wait how, maggie who do you think the best person to room with in this room right now would be um hmm probably pete oh thank you you know, really? we, have the, we have the same taste in movies. That's true. So that's good. <laughs> Great Comedy, <laughs> should be on. Comedy sequels from the 90s. Yeah, listen, it's a, we're just going to do a uh, Police Academy marathon. Okay. Yeah. And Take a gun after that. Oh, I, I, I speak basically my language. Pete's honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think Pete's kind of quieter guy than the rest of you. Yeah, yeah. I can feel that. I think yeah, EJ's I EJ, you should be pretty neat. You should, no. you, you, oh, you're you're no. a mess. Okay. Oh, I mean, okay. I I'm cool. I mean, I you're just a producer. I just so. ruined, <laughs> yeah, right. I just ruined with somebody last weekend in a hotel. So I I feel like you got they, good etiquette. Yeah, they they got the etiquette and experience factor. I've done this a lot. Yeah. And being <laughs> a, you know a young man who's had the room with dudes a bunch of times. Uh, but yeah, I'm not the neatest. Okay. okay. So like clothes around, it'll be clothes around, luggage kind of be thrown around. Uh, yeah. Feels like you're out. I gotta tell you, <laughs> I got too many clothes. Yeah. I can't share the space with you. My problem with Bogus is that I think you'd be uh, judgmental. <sighs> yeah, I feel I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like later date. <laughs> I feel like uh, yeah. If I screwed up something, it would make the show the next day. Like I feel like <laughs> sorry, yeah, Andrew. I mean, yes, of course. It's, it's all, all for content. It'd be a little stress roomy with you because I'm like, uh oh, Bogus has watched me like a hawk. That's well, his way of Wipe it down the bathroom a hundred times. It's his way of getting his own room. <laughs> <laughs> Are we wrong? I mean, you're right in that if something happened, it'd be go on the air. Yeah. But it wouldn't I wouldn't be like a hawk watching you nonstop hoping for a mistake. It's like Prof walks by and Bogus is just looking at you, trailing you, Mona Lisa yeah. eyes. Did <laughs> you ever have to room with Mirage? No, because I was never allowed to go on trips with them. Oh, okay. So but when I did travel early, I, I we had our own rooms. I think it's only right. I mean, we're all we're, we're old. Yeah, that's part of it too. Yeah, we're like, staying in a hotel. We're accustomed to a certain yeah. lifestyle. Yes. We're staying in a hotel in Vegas, by the way, which uh, we do get our own rooms. But I happen to know this hotel; that it's about thirty-four dollars a night. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah. It, yeah, this is what the NFL thinks of the media. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh, your media hotels. Yeah, we're not it's gonna, like the lowest rated one on the yeah. like baseball bat when you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> which is great for us that we're gonna be you know have to sleep at odd hours because of this show. I'm sure there'll be no problems yeah, with that. Actually, any of us would be easy to ruin with. None of us are. We just put our schedule together for Super Bowl week. Uh, there's no time for sleep at all. <laughs> no. yeah. I'm feeling very good about our extracurriculars that are planned, by the way. Oh, I know. This Must is going to be nice. Be, I don't know when we're... Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, what Andrew, are we doing next week, Pete? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a hotel room. That's right. Would you like... Just tell us. Would you like T-shirt? My coworkers went to Vegas and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Would you rather some kind of kitschy... Snow globe. What do you want us to buy you in the airport? The trophy, the Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> Barney, <laughs> like that. Steal it. Is there a third Kelsey yeah, brother you can pick up? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Bring her. We'll bring her back. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, we got our marching orders. Andrew Bogus is here with headlines. Good uh, morning. Guys, odd to wake up this morning and see three tweets among the first five in my feed retiring Jalen Brunson's number at Madison <laughs> Square Garden. I guess beating the Pacers in February is a big deal. Now to a minute 50. One point Indiana lead. Pass nearly picked off by Nimhart. Kept alive by Brunson. Driving into the paint. He's fouled and hits. The continuation, and Brunson will hit to the line. Kenny Albert on Knicks Radio. Brunson scored 40, the most in a single game in NBA history, to beat the Pacers uh-huh. 109-105. It's the Knicks' ninth win in a row, the longest winning streak in NBA history. Brunson's an all-star <laughs> reserve for the first time. I mean... I got nothing to say. Yeah, he can't even talk on MSG post game. Also on the East bench, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brown, Tyrese Maxey. The West reserves include Anthony Davis, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Steph Curry. Back on the court, the Cavs stayed hot. 108 101 in Memphis. Cleveland's 112 with 13. The Lakers won in Boston, 114 105 without LeBron and AD. And the Sixers outscored the Jazz in Utah, 127 124. But Joel Embiid has a lateral meniscus injury in his left knee. He remains out through the weekend as they figure out how to treat the problem. Uh, by the way, do we have to do we have to talk to HR or something? Because the uh, the traffic problem with the parade next week for the next win streak is <laughs> that going to be here? Oh right, we're, oh thank God yeah. because don't worry about are it. Are they man. hanging a banner for nine in a row? You guys because see how smug this is. What can, what can I get you guys yeah. from the Knicks parade I'll next relax. week? What yeah, would yeah. you guys Fetty. like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Split up. they can have realize... a stupid tournament in December. Where we can't celebrate nine straight wins. <laughs> yeah, in the, is, yeah, in the regular season. This is Perloff's personal hell. Not yeah. only I are the Knicks good, yeah. that they've yeah. won nine in a row. EJ is a diehard Knicks fan. Pete, you're also Knicks? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Bogus and Nets, right? Pete's not a Knicks fan. And Perloff's su- the superstar yeah. of his franchise goes down with a torn meniscus yeah. as the Knicks are rising yeah. to the point where Jalen Brunson's like a folk hero. I came in this morning. I said to EJ, I'm like, this is, I actually said the word living hell for me. It's like, <laughs> why? Exactly He's what like, said. why? He's like, why? Doesn't everybody like the Knicks? I'm like, no. <laughs> that is not Doesn't what I said. Like I don't think everybody like Knicks. I said, I don't understand. This team is not a hateable team. No, no the fans like, are. This is a likable team. You're right about that. No, no, no. Tom Thibodeau teams are not likable. They're How? They're grinders. They're the regular work. season oh, grinders. So they, they're hard workers. We, we don't like that in America. No, this is Villanova, basically. And I think Villanova is generally likable. Yeah. No, nah, this to me is Tom Thibodeau's bulls in another version. I don't think that... Uh, they're not my kind of team. I like... Offense and glitzy. I don't like. Oh, I'm going to grind you out. And Rick Brunson's going to. Sorry, Jalen Brunson's going to. I keep <laughs> doing sorry, that. His dad's there too. <laughs> yeah, he's going to dribble, dribble, bad. dribble. Pump fake, pump fake, pump fake. I'm sick of it. Doesn't matter. They win. Exactly. It's, win it's what? E- it's easy win to root regular for season. It's, it's easy to root for Jalen Brunson. It is. Yeah. He's six foot one. No. He's come. He come to New York. Everybody said he was going to be a bust here, and he's turned into. A Nobody said he was going to be a bust here. Oh, uh, come on now. Let's not. Well, it was, he, it was going off over, the Knicks history. Yeah, come on. He over. I'm not trying to get into that. He overpaid, overpaid him. Wasn't yeah, going to work overpaid out. Overpaid him. Yeah, hundred million. Oh, right. Looks like a deal now. Yeah, it's the best contract in the wow. NBA. I can't wait for Joel Embiid in three years to go the Knicks and be hurt <laughs> seventy out of eighty two games. Look, the Knicks have do what? Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson, the last two big signings. They're both all stars. So seems to be seems to be working out signing for the Knicks. Working out how. Um, they've come here when the Knicks were terrible, and now they're winning. So, yes. We're winning out. what? <laughs> what do you mean, winning what? They were NBA regular they season. Were a, they me, were a losing team. Me beating my daughter in Connect Four means more than an NBA <laughs> regular season win. Uh, Wake they up won to a that playoff reality. series last year. What are you talking about? They were a playoff series, not right. the playoffs. Right, and your they Nets were... had four years with Kyrie and Katie. How many playoff series yeah, they won? It was a disaster. They okay, had, thank you. It was, they, it was the ultimate okay, disaster. They had right. two big threes, right. and they still couldn't win a championship. Right. You, you guys talking about, oh, playoffs, regular season. Come on. I got <laughs> to say, this is Perloff's. Just personal living nightmare. It's, it no, doesn't but, get any worse. Uh, the thing is, I don't but, understand because like, I didn't the Dallas come in, Cowboys I finally here, winning. I no, actually, I, I'm. It's setting up. It hurts now. It's short term pain for long term game because when the Knicks fail in the playoffs, <laughs> that's gonna be beautiful. Just like your Mets. <laughs> well, how did my team come in? Yeah, I, I told that to EJ. When you have friends at work and they root for one team, 
I think it's it's just an instinct to hate that team. That's you don't only wanna... you. I don't understand <laughs> no, that. No, no, no. We walk in today, again, and I'm not lying, the three different tweets, and yours is one of them, about putting the guy's number in this raft and the Raptors at the Garden. He's an MVP you're, candidate. You're dressed like you're a Knicks sub tonight with your tearaway <laughs> pants and your warm-up yeah, yeah. jacket. Great jacket. There's it's a Jalen Brunson t-shirt jersey down the hall. It's a lot. That's what the problem is. Not Jalen Brunson. You know, it's you dopes not learning any lesson well, and oh, making this wait, guy so, a legend. Wait, so... Hold Learn on. a lesson. I, I they wonder, haven't had players this good in years. What are you talking about? I wonder if this is a particularly hostile work environment when yeah. it comes to fan affiliations of or if other. I've never worked in like a quote. I've never worked in an office that wasn't sports. My parents owned a yeah. restaurant growing up, and then I've been working in sports ever since. So I don't. I've never worked in a traditional office. Sports Illustrated. I mean, but that was Sports Illustrated. Yeah, everybody was fans of different yeah, things. Yeah, was, it was our job to water cooler this stuff, basically, and yeah. talk about sports all day long. If you talked about anything else, it was like, get back to work, talking about sports. <laughs> so I, I'm curious if our work environments are particularly hostile with fan inter- our fandom, as opposed to, like, if you work in a law firm or insurance or something. Well, I think... Also, there's something about the Knicks that brings it out. There's just something. <laughs> maybe it's the owner. I don't know what's well, going on. Oh, that that owner sucks. I mean, but, no I, way I around that. By the way, it's, like you. it's our buddy Nick Costos, who's supposed to be Mr. Analytical Betting Guy. Is, uh, like He's like, oh, well, we've already accomplished what Willis Reed did. I don't understand. All you <laughs> Knicks fans in the media, I, you're just way I over Nick. the top. Saying Jalen Brunson's number is going to be in the Raptors is not over the top, given what he's done in two years. It's not. Perloff, why There's can't you let them have nice chance. things? Well, can I, yeah. just, you, you were vehemently opposed to the Miami Heat retiring Udonis Haslam's number. Oh, Jalen Brunson's had a good 18 <laughs> months, serious? and you're putting him next to Patrick Ewing. Jalen Brunson is 500 times better than Udonis Haslam. I'm not having this conversation. Uda- I'm not. Udonis Haslam has been connected to far more success in Miami than Jalen Brunson has in the Knicks, and you can't, be- can't believe they retired his number, and you're putting Brunson next to Willis Reed and Patrick Ewing after a year and a half. Udonis Haslam, Haslam has scored as much points as, like, I don't know, like what, George Murison in the NBA. And you're telling me <laughs> okay. that he has to have his jump- number retired, but Jalen Brunson, the MVP candidate, Shouldn't I right now, George. Yeah, no, you should not. No one's number should be retired after eighteen months. Are you kidding me? If Am I all, walking around retiring for the Doors number is the, for the Mets? Is, is he going to retire tomorrow? Time. Come on, like, he's not. He's not going to retire tomorrow. He's, he, he's not. But is he going to score forty for the rest of his life? He's a star. He's in the prime of his career. Why should I? Why wait? You so, could, he's in the prime of his career. Yeah, it's a little. So, it's a little early to go rafters. Thank you. A little early How to go rafters. rafters. Be excited. Yeah. Be excited. A little. Early. I mean, Are is, you, is Mello getting in the rafters? You he all, might. You've Better already not. had people who have done more than Jalen has. He's yes. great and he's easy to root for. But we, I think everyone gets their due. I have a newsflash for you guys. He's already done as much as Melo has in two years. I know, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, we're not sure Melo's in the rafters. Right, so that's my plug down. (laughs) I'm not rooming with EJ anymore. (laughs) You guys would get no sleep. Bilotti. You're Bloody, I'm <laughs> struggling with you, buddy. I can't believe Pete's two for two. I might be insulted. That's right. Well, let's just keep in mind, too, the uh, Knicks are being run by an attorney and not really a general manager, and that's what makes this even more, I think, an accomplishment. Well, yes, an agent. Ambrose. Yeah. Agent, yeah. There's no accomplishment. They've done nothing. <laughs> Zero <laughs> points. <laughs> Zero. Face. The organization, I, I think, they've I, done I, nothing. Look at the veins in Pearl's head just now. I can't believe it. They've done nothing. Look at that. Just I because mean, the Knicks are winning some games. <laughs> look, I don't think I don't think Jalen Brunson's number should go in the re- rafters yet, but you got to look at this organization and how they turned it around. It's it's a complete 180 from what it's been the last few years. Listen, here's the thing. If you want to get in the rafters, you're going to be up there next to Billy Joel. It That's takes right. a lot mm-hmm. to get up to the rafters. He'll be there. Maybe. If he doesn't uh, get hurt, he'll be there. Anything else? Uh, I should point out that the NBA fined the Sixers seventy-five grand for uh, Embiid's late scratch last weekend in Denver. This was before the knee injury that kicked off. That's that, so weak. Y- yeah. The guy tore his meniscus. Take. Well, gonna... this was the, that came afterwards. Ugh. The the first original mm. like Fugazi <laughs> they, knee injury. Was they the... knew he was hurt though. Yeah. But there's rules, and he was not on the injury report, and then all of a sudden he didn't play. All right. And seventy-five grand is nothing. I think they could put that in their pocket and not worry about it. Exactly. Uh, Otherwise, I'm done. Back to you guys. That was eventful. Uh, Okay. Thank you, Andrew Bogish. We've got the one person no one wants to room with on the road. (laughs) Uh, Coming up. I feel that too. The Cowboys have a conundrum on their hands. We'll get into that next. Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break.
4 minutes 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Looking for a defensive coordinator. That's going to be on the docket now for yeah. Jarrett and company because Dan Quinn got hired by the Washington Commanders. 
Do you remember the defense when my friend Andy Dalton was in Dallas before Dan Quinn got there? Mike Nolan? It was bad. It was terrible. So I'm starting to worry this all-in talk and everything going on with Dallas. Is that big uh, Jerry Jones bus with a star on the side, is it going thumb on Luis? Are we driving toward a cliff here? <laughs> I am... I'm looking at the NFC East, and I do not know about the Dallas Cowboys. Quinn is gone. They have to pay everybody and go all in simultaneously. Feels like Jerry is taking the reins of the franchise back. This could go terribly. (laughs) This was one of your keys for their success. Well, you didn't say success. You just said this is what's going to happen this offseason. Jerry's going to get nuts. Yeah, I think that's what Jerry's saying. Yeah, you're right. I, I didn't say keys to success. That's what all in means. Get a big name. At least get a Derrick Henry, who might not even be that expensive. But that's not a good move. You know, they're going to make some short-term moves, and the defense is now a huge concern. You can't feel great if you're a Cowboy fan. Losing Dan Quinn is big. That's your Cowboy quickie. (laughs) I mean, the whole... I just... I think people were really down on Quinn because the prisoner of the moment, the whole team no-showed against the Packers. But that was everybody. I mean, Mm. he had to wear that, no doubt. The defense was bad, but everybody was bad in that game. That's why they got blown out. Well, I think it was... To me, it's also, remember the Bills game in Buffalo? Yeah. There's, the formula came out about halfway through the season, just run it down sure. their throat. Micah Parsons weighs about 230 pounds. I, I think that, well, that's a, he's just very small, and they don't have the big guys up front. So there's some personnel problems. There's uh, there's something. I think the whole NFC East is, is very watered down for next year. I don't know. The Cowboys have a first-place schedule. They have a new defensive coordinator. We don't know who the players are going to be. Uh, the Eagles are struggling, obviously. The Commanders have this new coach, Dan Quinn, which is uninspiring, I believe. Uh, so You and I will disagree on that, but we'll talk about but that But regardless, uh, it's just it, I'm thinking about next year's Super Bowl, and like, the Cowboys are not jumping to mind right now. So here's the this is where I think the Cowboys made a mistake, and this is potentially where it could show, which is when you keep your head coach, but you don't, really give them a vote of confidence and all you do is just to have them play out the last year of your contract. If you do want to attract a high profile defensive coordinator, you're essentially asking them to come in for what a, a, a one year hope and pray because if Mike McCarthy gets fired, you're getting fired too yeah. and everyone's cleaning house. So do you have, I know the allure of the Cowboys is, is I'm sure strong even in coaching circles, but do you really want to come in when if you feel like you're on a ship that could sink midway yeah. through the season if McCarthy does anything wrong? Well, so the reporting, Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News, said Mike Zimmer, former Cowboys assistant, could come back. Uh, I think for an old guy like that, they can they could deal with a sinking ship. Okay, but is that what the fans want? The fans don't want, hey, bring in old guy on like the last Vic, legs. Like a Vic Fangio? Well, no, He's but already I, has a job. No, I'm saying a Vic Fangio type. type yeah, yeah, I think the fans are okay with an experienced guy. I think the scary thing is uh, have a young, hot coordinator who you know – is going to outshine the head coach. I think Zimmer's okay. Uh, what's the other option? Al Harris inside the great defensive back coach. Uh, I just think Quinn has really uh, saved the Cowboys from a lot of defensive embarrassments because they were terrible before he got there. I'm really worried for the Cowboys. Yeah, they lost Trey Diggs, made up for that. Deron Bland is a pro bowler. I mean, lots of Dan Quinn did a lot of good in Dallas, even if the last game was bad. Kevin is in Oregon, wants to talk about the 49ers and why he believes... Uh, in this team. Kevin, what's up? Good morning. I'm becoming a regular caller now. Hey, since Love the it. Dallas Cowboys are the topic, I just want to say they suck. Um, <laughs> as far as the 49ers, oh, okay. the 49ers go, um, under Kyle Shanahan, as head coach, the 49ers have had a reputation of not being able to come back, particularly in big games. And it occurred to me that their last two playoff games with Brock Purdy as quarterback, they've come back to win. And I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that. Well, Thanks Kevin, a lot. Yeah, I the, the 49ers trailing, I, I yeah. actually feel better about than the 49ers <laughs> leading. It's not the comebacks, it's the collapses. That's what you're worried about with Shanahan in a big game. That's, I love that. That's such a brilliant point. Like, basically, I, I want to watch the Super Bowl with you, and the Niners will be down 21-7. You're like, got them right where they want them. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> but yeah, if Let's they're get up. A Brandon if they're Ayuk up, deflection, the immaculate yeah. deflection part two. If they're up 21-7, everyone's going to pick apart every call Kyle Shanahan makes, and it's going to be a sweated out. It's so funny. It's a complete reversal. You are welcome to weigh in. I'd like to hear if the Cowboy fans getting a little nervous. This all-in stuff, do not get duped by this. Do not. Jerry's toying with your emotions. I feel bad for Cowboy oh, fans. Oh, you are so wrong about that. You don't think Jerry probably – Jerry's a fantasy football owner. I mean, think about in the September when you're they're like, this is a year I'm going to win the league. 
He is going. He's just like you and me. <laughs> that is not a good sign. Uh, coming up, we do have more on the NFL coaching and the impact it's having on college football as well. The, all these things are interconnected. We'll get to them next. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining.
30 seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. He's been on the TB12 method since he was six. She's on her third scotch. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Lots of people waiting to get their shots in on Bill Belichick. Hey, welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. Bill Belichick officially gets shut out of this hiring cycle, Perloff, as Dan Quinn yep. takes the last job open. He'll now be the commander's head coach. And... Marlon Humphrey from the Baltimore Ravens took to social media yesterday and said the quote greatest coach of all time did not get hired out of the six head coaching jobs open. I think that debate can be put to rest now, basically taking away Bill Belichick's entire resume simply because he didn't get hired. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing with Belichick. Look at the record since Brady left. They were seven and nine in 2020, 10 and seven, pretty good. Mac Jones, eight, nine, four, 13. That is not all-time stuff. This happens to every great coach, a lot of great coaches, where at the end, they sort of peter out, and none of them usually get a second chance. Tom Landry didn't come back and coach somebody else. Vince Lombardi did one year and then uh, unfortunately passed away in Washington. They're, the second act in the 70s, it's not a common thing. So I don't know why everyone expected it to happen here with Belichick. Well, Belichick's an outlier, right? Because I know Lombardi, you're talking about great coaches, Tom Landry, Super Bowl champion coaches, but Belichick is kind of in a class all his own, isn't he, with no, the six rings? Not, I mean, not. he's not in a different class than Vince Lombardi and Tom Landry. No, I know, but in this era, yes, he is. I in, mean, he's out in front. If we're talking about wins are not a quarterback stat, but wins are a coach stat. Yeah. I believe that. And Belichick, I know he was with Brady, but he it's not like he was standing there twiddling his thumbs while Brady was marching the team up and down the field. But you know the reality here, Maggie. In 2019, when Tom Brady had his last season there, Bill Belichick was probably considered the greatest coach of all time. The debate has opened up for sure. Marlon Humphrey's right. I mean, if you're going to look at the Mount Rushmore of coaches, yeah, Belichick's there. But to put him number one over names like Lombardi, Shula, Landry, Paul Brown... I don't think it's as easy anymore. Wow. I, I See, I think that's being a real prisoner of the moment. Bill Belichick, unfortunately, went through something that a lot of coaches go through, which is he never got the quarterback again. And, you know, we could say, oh, if Mac Jones was the 49ers and what would he be? I, I mean, Belichick, it's a lot of it's self-inflicted because he is the general manager and the end-all, be-all. But you're telling me the Belichick culture, his leadership, his game planning – I don't see this guy who wildly fell off a cliff. I saw a guy who made a couple bad personnel decisions and somebody who could not find a quarterback after well, Tom Brady left. That's funny. I don't even look at the court. Look at the receivers. Okay. I mean, what court? You could have Patrick Mahomes combined with Lamar Jackson. How are you gonna? Who are you throwing to? I mean, Patrick there's so Mahomes many problems. Right now is throwing to basically Travis Kelsey and like Rasheed Rice, and he doesn't have a lot of weapons. And because he's so good, he makes up for that. I mean, they were throwing a Jalen Rager and Kendrick Bourne this year. I mean, they've had a real problem with receiver. That's why Tom was like, get me out of here and go to Tampa <laughs> Bay. And Tom got to Tampa Bay. He's like, oh, my God, it's Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I think that it's not just the quarterback. There are a lot of personnel problems. But the reality is that marriage with Belichick and Brady was amazing. Belichick alone. I, not I, as appealing. I'm not saying he's not as good as Rich Kotite. Uh, I'm just saying... He's not head and shoulders above the all-time greats. Okay, but he's getting passed over for guys who barely done this, you know. And, yeah. and that, to me, is wild. And I'm wrestling with these two conflicting things that I seem to be hearing, which is Belichick gets passed over because uh, Atlanta was really the only real offer, and he di- he got along well with Arthur Blank, but did not get along well with the other people in the front office. Right? Or, the other people, or the other people in the front office not just Rich McKay, GM Terry Fondo, know that Bill Belichick's could come in here and take all my power away. So sure. the incentive to not hire Bill Belichick kind of makes sense. Yeah, and I guess the relationship was frosty, 
that's some reporting oh, from Jeff a... Howe between Belichick and some front office people. Okay, whatever. Oh, wait, Rich McKay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, but, uh, the, by the way, that story is re- probably repeated over several franchises where their executives are like, I don't, I don't want Belichick in my building. Well, so that's the thing. I think that Belichick is being, yes, the record without Brady, I get it. What do you think happens after a legend walks away? But And, and again, they never found the quarterback again. But I think the other part is Belichick, you know, basically his curmudgeonly behavior. I think that, you know, Robert Kraft, whether he's put his name on it or whether it's books or articles, all these things written about how much he didn't get along with Belichick. You know, we would call him names behind his back and say, oh, this guy's a bleep hole and all that, my coach, da-da-da. I think he just painted this picture of this guy who's so hard to work with. Okay, so that's the story we're being told about Bill Belichick right now about why he's not getting hired. Then how in the second breath, can you say, but he's going to hover over the NFL for any head coach who screws up is going to have to look over their shoulder because Bill Belichick is going to be standing right there. How can both things be true? See, that's why I think we're having a disingenuous argument about Bill Belichick. Well, if you don't see, want him now, why would you want him in six months? But what do you mean hover over? So you think no one's going to hire Bill Belichick to be the coach midway through the season. Say Mike McCarthy struggles in Dallas. Right. And they have to fire him after week eight. You don't bring in Bill Belichick. Well, I'm just you promote the shadow. Assist. Well, okay, but then yeah. when Belichick, I mean, you just had Jerry Jones out here at the Senior Bowl saying, "I can work with Bill Belichick. I can see myself working with Big Bill right. Belichick." I mean, Jerry's doing his part to fan the flames here, probably to a keep himself in the news and two maybe apply a little pressure to McCarthy. But it's like. How can both things be true? Uh, He's a dinosaur who can't do things his way and is not the greatest coach of all time. And look what he did without Brady. And also, he could be the hottest name on the market next year. But why would he be the hottest name on the market next year? He's going to run into the same exact problems. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not yeah. hearing that. I'm hearing, oh, everyone want better look out because Bill mm-hmm. Belichick's now available. If you trip up, your owner could just bring in Belichick next year. I think that everybody who's saying that also thought Belichick would get a job this year. And they're not looking at the reality of the situation is these young teams and these young executives do not want Belichick anywhere near there. Think about the opening, when, what are their job openings when your team is bad, right? So Atlanta, Carolina, teams like that. Uh, why would you have Bill Belichick? You're not ready to win, so you need a ready-to-win spot. And who are those? That was the Chargers this year. Right. They, they got Harbaugh, so they didn't want Belichick. And it's the Cowboys next year. Other than that, maybe your Bills. I yeah. think that you you can't have a young, developing team and bring in 72-year-old Bill Belichick. It makes no sense, time frame-wise. Okay, but here's the thing about Harbaugh. That is a gr- we could all say that's going to be a great fit, and we have sound for you from the press conference, and we have all this great Jim Harbaugh stuff. Jim Harbaugh might not be in his 70s, but nobody thinks he's staying for a long time. So even if you have a younger Jim Harbaugh, we already know, at least history would show you, what are you getting him for? Four years, five at the most? Well, he was at Michigan for, for a long nine. time. Okay, but that was a little different. His alma mater took a little slower to get going. Well, I think that how long are you going to have Bill Belichick? Well, I know, but I'm saying you might have him the same amount of time mm, as, as Jim Harbaugh, even though Harbaugh's I, younger. I find that hard to believe. Uh, I, I think Bill Belichick is a much shorter, like, you got to win now with Belichick. You're, let's take Atlanta, for example. W- what's the time frame of when you're a Super Bowl team? With Bill Bel- you're not even close right now, in my opinion. You don't have a quarterback, for one thing. You have some nice pieces around, but you don't have a whole team that's uh, ready to do anything. So, Bill Bowser, what's the goal here? To go 8-9 and nine your first year? No, I think the goal would be you're right at the doorstep of the playoffs and to make the playoffs. Yeah, I don't I don't bring in Bill Belichick to make the playoffs. I want to build a contender. Uh, you know, I want to bring in the next Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, and do something over a longer a longer time frame. Okay. I want a 10-year winner. Well, we're talking about Bill Belichick yeah. getting shut out of the cycle here and reasons for it. And I, I guess... Yes, you always want the person who's going to be there for the next 10 years, but don't forget, there's a lot of desperate franchises out there, too, where your ticket sales are waning, where you just have to show your fan base, hey, we can do this. I mean, not to give you guys astray, we got a couple of Jets fans around here. What would you give just to make the playoffs for the first time since 2010? Like, you got to uh-huh. walk before you can run here. Like, not everyone's – I know Belichick will um, be judged by rings, if he can get you to the playoffs and get your franchise going in a good direction, a lot of teams should be wanting to sign up. For I that. don't. Th- I actually don't read it that way. I don't think fans were sad that they their teams did not hire Bill Belichick. I think fans, believe it or not, were more sad they didn't get Ben Johnson, the Lions' offensive coordinator. I, I it's funny because Philly, my team, is in play for Belichick as well, and there wasn't a strong move. Nobody really wanted Belichick there. People were like, "Oh, I want Vrabel. I want Harbaugh." I don't think a lot of fans are that excited about Bill Belichick. Do you think they are? Here's a question. Maybe we can put this up as a poll question. 
will Belichick be the head coach for uh will he will he ever be a head coach again? Will he coach another game in the NFL? I, I don't know if he'd ever could go D coordinator or something like that. I doubt it. But will he coach another game? Because again, if you don't like him now, why are you gonna like him in a year? You know, you're gonna not like a seventy two year old Belichick, you're gonna want a seventy three year old Bill Belichick? I, I don't get it. It'd maybe, just be if you're desperate as an owner. Maybe the teams will be a little different. I, I Again, I don't think a young developing team has any interest in Bill Belichick. So if you're like this year's, even Seattle, like well, they're not on the brink of a Super Bowl. They're, they don't have their real quarterback. So I think you need to be right at the brink. So Buffalo, Philadelphia, Dallas, maybe those teams. But a young team, there's no way to bring in Bill Belichick, especially at 73 next year. I mean, how many of these coaching hires do we really think are going to work out? Because now everyone who got hired, whether this is fair or unfair, if you don't work out and you're saying, I'm just pulling this one out of a hat, say you're Brian Callahan and you flame out in a year and a half, yeah. isn't your fan base going to be like, we fired Vrabel for this guy? We could uh, we could have had Belichick. We didn't do it. We could have had Pete Carroll. We didn't do it. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's funny. Brian Callahan's getting this incredible buzz as this NFL genius. <laughs> I, I don't just understand pulled that one. Up right, right, right. But it, yeah, I no. I think D'Amico Ryan's kind of changed the game a little bit. Where now everybody thinks, "Ooh, I'm going to get the 38 year old former linebacker in to get my." I think the young youth is the thing. I mean, it's been proven. Coaches are getting younger and younger, and I, I don't want to be ageist here, but you do have an advantage at 38 that you might not have at 72 that you can stay up all night coaching and. I, I just think that's a trend. Look yeah. at Shane Steichen, this kid in Indiana. He, he got Gardner Minshew to nine wins this year. I think owners are paying attention to this. Yeah, but, I mean, you can still burn yourself out even if you're young. But you're, of any of the openings yeah. that were out there, was there a true opening that fit Bill Belichick? I say no. Maybe the Chargers? Maybe. But they hired Jim Harbaugh. It's not like they, they hired um, a very young coach that, that's from nowhere. That's what I'm saying, Pete. Yeah. I agree with you. The, yeah. These teams are all young and developing. Right. I, I think I think the, the market next year will be very fruitful, especially because you look, look at that whole uh, NFC East. I mean, not all those three teams that might be in the running might not have uh, uh, might not win, probably won't win. So you're going to have one of those teams looking for a guy, and Belichick fits Either one of those teams. Well, but here's the thing, and we're talking about Bill Belichick and his future as he gets shut out of the coaching cycle. What's going to change about the Belichick, you know, about him in a year? He's still going to want to bring in his guys. Yeah. He's still going to want control. I don't know if he's going to want, you know, full control for the draft and stuff, but nothing about the, the things that detracted from Belichick this time around are still going to be there the next time around. But, you guys are saying the teams might be different, but you're still asking Bill, you're asking now a team that's on the doorstep to come in and change everything with mm -hmm. Belichick. It's more appealing, I think, to change a Wobegon franchise and put the Belichick, you know, sort of make it shine them up with a little Belichick than the team that's already winning 12 games a year. There might be more of an opportunity to do that next year, especially if you say Dallas, right? Yeah. Say McCarthy's out, you're bringing in Belichick. Look, Parcells did it, and there's probably a little bit of a uh, of a chip on Belichick's shoulder. Hey, I want to outshine Bill Parcells. Yeah. There's always been that, that chip. So sure. I think he might take a little bit of a step back on what he wants to just get in as well. I think that's yeah. a good point because – these teams, if you're Bill Belichick, why the hell am I giving over control to whoever runs the Falcons or who runs, yeah. who's gonna run the forty, the the, uh, the, uh, the the Commanders? Like, if you're a guy with six rings, you're coming and saying I deserve all the power. Right. If you're going to the Eagles, the Cowboys, um, some of these other teams that may be playoff caliber teams or teams with a lot of you know established winning, you you may say, okay, for this team, I will just be the head coach. It's a different landscape in terms of the, the the teams that may be available as opposed to this year. Yeah. Whereas Perlos mentioned, it's all young teams, teams rebuilding, teams trying to figure out who they are. And it, it, for him, he's not going to come in there and say, "Oh, I'll, I'll listen to some first year GM." Why would he do that? Yeah, I just wonder, does he change? Like, do you change when you're 72 and your way has worked? Well, it's supply and demand, and I think the demand is going to be much different next year. I agree yep. with these guys. Yep. And the fact that it's really interesting that the Cowboys didn't fire their coach this year, could have. The Eagles didn't fire their coach this year, easily could have. The Giants didn't fire Brian Dable, could have. There's a, and Buffalo. Also, Buffalo, I wonder if maybe I'm being regional. Maybe these Northeast teams have a little more fascination with Bill Belichick, too. I mean, the Jets and the Giants have had him in their back door forever. It seems like there's more natural fits next season. Uh, in the chat, YouTube.com slash CBS Sports Radio, Twitch.tv slash CBS Sports Radio is where you can watch the show. Uh, Drew Walsh is in the chat, said, is there any amount of money 
you could give Belichick to be the defensive coordinator, and then when you fire McCarthy in season, you just promote Belichick, and you have your coach <laughs> of the future. That's a Cowboy yeah. fan's dream. You want, to talk about, <laughs> you want to talk about looking over your shoulder. That might be the greatest example in the history of sports in terms of a person looking over their shoulder. I don't think any coach would do that. Would, would accept that. Well, Mike whatsoever. McCarthy doesn't really have a choice, does he? I mean, he's a, he just has to accept whatever. He's on a he's a lame duck coach. If I'm coaching the team, I step away if that's if that's what happens. Would you? Yep, I would. I feel like it's a, a man of principle. A former Belichick assistant might do it. Like Josh McDaniels would probably do that. Maybe Dable. I mean, that Dable would definitely not Mike, Mike McCarthy. That would be bad. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, maybe there's a guy who's close friends with Belichick who could pull this off. Well, I don't think if Dayball, the head coach of the Giants, brought in. Do they have a defensive coordinator yet? Did they replace They haven't Wayne, picked it yet. Wayne no. Martindale? That would be 100% without a doubt on the direction of the owner. And that's not what you want. You don't want the owner di- dictating who the coaching staff is. you got to let your head coach do something. Well, it's still a little better than Mike McCarthy. Because <laughs> Mike McCarthy is going to be the most scrutinized coach in the entire NFL next year. I know. He was and, this uh, year. <laughs> yeah, to have Belichick over your shoulder would, would not be a good idea. I, I think Belichick does coach again next year, and I think it's going to go poorly, by the way. And I think one thing that I heard Adam Schefter say uh, yesterday on, on the Pat McAfee show, which I think is going to be interesting, it could be a race for teams to fire their coaches. To get to Belichick. To get to Belichick or Mike Vrabel. See, that, th- okay, Vrabel puts that. That doesn't make any sense for me. It's going to be a race to Belichick when y- all these openings, and I get what you guys are saying, that maybe the teams weren't right, but that, he he, he could barely get interviews this time around, but yet there's going to be a race to fire your incumbent head coach to get to Belichick in six months. Well, well the, the thought process is, changes. The thought process is if you can get Belichick and interview him in the middle of the season, you might be able to hire him in the middle of the season. Now, he probably won't coach the middle of the season, but you won't have to compete with five, six, seven other teams who may want his services, which, again, to your point, is crazy because that didn't happen this time around. We had six teams, and yeah. everyone told, gave, told him to kick rocks. I know. It, 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 it is fascinating, but apparently that is what something to watch. So if you're if you're Robert Sala, if you're Brian Dable. Oh, he'll never coach the Jets, If guys. you're, I don't know. Eber if you're these, if you're Eberflus, if you're one of these guys that's coming back on the hot seat, mm. you better you better start off real good because apparently uh, you will get fired midseason so that these guys uh, can get a look at Bill Belichick early. I think there are 32 owners who are going to be – once the Lions start blowing everyone out next year, Ben Johnson is going to be so hot and Ben Johnson clones. I think you guys are wrong. I don't think Belichick and even Vrabel are going to be super hot. I think the young offensive minds are taking over the league. There's just you And can't defensive avoid. minds. Yeah, just but young, it, young, young, young. Yeah, and well, yeah. and the, I don't know if the defensive guys are going to work out. I think it's Shanahan and McVay have just changed the entire league. Well, I know, remember, but, you got D'Amico Ryan's, and yeah, what he did is. I but think but Sloan gets a lot of credit for that too, though. That's true. So no, but you have Gerard Mayo, you've got Raheem Morris. Yeah, and I don't think I. I'm not sure that all those guys are going to work. Those guys are in tough Mike spots. Mike McDonald. Yeah, those are guys are all in tough spots. Watch Ben Johnson next year. Teams are going to. Would you want Ben Johnson over Bill Belichick? I know that sounds weird, but I, to me, it's a no-brainer. Oh gosh, I, I can't. I mean, I can't. I've seen so many coaches who are coordinators, good coordinators, come to the top spot and crash and burn because they can't handle the the big chair. And if I were running my franchise. I would want somebody with experience. That's me, 855-212-4CBS. Okay, you're welcome to weigh in on this question. Will Bill Belichick ever be a, ever coach again in the NFL? So weird to say. 855-212-4CBS. And if you're a Cowboy fan, do you want Bill Belichick, what did Jerry say, around the rim? <laughs> Hanging around the whim, rim? There you go. Uh, coming up, we do have the... One thing you need to do, to know about this upcoming Super Bowl, our Super Bowl bulletin is next. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining.
four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Uh, welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. Okay, it's Friday before the Super Bowl, Mag. You know what that means. Super Bowl bulletin time? Super Bowl, uh, that's what I'm being told. Super Bowl <laughs> yes. bulletin time. Yes, we're doing this every day leading up to the big game. So this is what you need to know about the Super Bowl. Nick Bosa offering his assessment of the Chiefs' offensive line yesterday. They stand out when you watch them. They hold a lot. <laughs> 
Message sent to referee Bill Vinovich. Oh, Watch the hands. This is like Phil Jackson level working the officials here. <laughs> uh, is this going to be a, a week-long battle to get the calls? Uh, also, a little Patrick Mahomes for you said the feeling of not making the Super Bowl in 2021 is what's fueling him. It's tough. Um, luckily enough, I've been able to go to the Pro Bowl. But, I mean, even going to the Pro Bowl and just sitting there and it's and you're, you're sitting there and you're like, man, I, I could be preparing for the Super Bowl. And, and you, you, you take it as an honor, um, but you're just sitting there and it's tough and it's hard to watch the game. And I know, like, I, my buddies, I know the last time we went in, my buddies had, like, a Super Bowl party, and they wanted everybody to come over, and I was just like, nah, I, I can barely, I'm barely going to even be able to watch it. Mm. Wow. He should try it. Super Bowl parties are great. I love how he was just like, uh, I got to go to mm. Pro Bowl. I guess that was okay. You know, <laughs> you know how many guys would probably die to be Pro Bowlers and the <laughs> amount of money and stuff that comes <laughs> with that? He's like, oh, went to Pro Bowl. That was pretty cool. Um, have you guys seen the shirtless picture of Patrick Mahomes that's gone viral lately? Oh, yes. oh yeah. So it does seem like, I don't know if he's going to a Super Bowl party, but he's enjoying some seven-layer dip. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, Girl come on. The he, body shaming. No, Mahomes, no. Said, Mahomes himself came out and said, yeah, I love my dad bod. So <laughs> he it said, is you funny. guys are doing me dirty. Yeah. So, and laughing at it. Thankfully. Listen, I mean, shirts off in the locker room. There's going to be cameras and stuff around. You just won the AFC Championship game, but I think they caught him at a bad angle, guys. No. I, don't, I don't think I don't think quarterbacks need to be no nope. buff. They don't. You're right. Like I think we've seen Jameis Winston. We've seen Donovan McNabb. I mean, like we. I yeah. got, like <laughs> what buff quarterbacks I don't besides know. like Cam Newton? Like do we say, oh, like well, it's great that he's so. Brolic. Well, I feel like those two players probably could have better careers if they were in better shape. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think have a shape. But I hear you. I think, uh, I mean, Brock Purdy, he is, he has no muscles at all, does he? I think he? that's pure steel under there, guys. I uh, think <laughs> I think you're right. Quarterbacks do not have to be buff. Brady Quinn was the buffest quarterback, and that never helped him. Yeah. You know? Helped Tom Brady, though. No, it didn't. He oh, never, he, 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 he famously it, had no muscles. No, no, not muscles. I'm talking about keeping in shape. Pliability. Yeah. Well, yeah. and being, and kind of being. I don't say thin. Brady definitely wasn't thin, but he was trim. Yeah, he's not a lot of body fat. Yeah, I mean that, that uh, NFL Combine picture is famous uh, of him yeah. in the you know but, in, in the shorts and no shirt. Right, but then he got chiseled as a pro. Mahomes no, no, he did other, not. He actually no, he, he, he he has definition. He doesn't look like Mahomes does. But he doesn't like Brad put on the fight in the no, fight no, club. Right. Uh, but he does now. Closer. He actually worked out. He always said, "I don't want muscles. I want pliability." Then towards the very end, he's like, "Well, now I'm going to my broadcast career. Look at him now. He's a six pack. Never had that." He makes fun of Josh Allen. He he called Josh Allen fat <laughs> yeah. when they were playing golf. But. And I know Brady doesn't have a six pack, but like he does not have what he doesn't look like Mahomes shirtless while he's playing. He doesn't have a twelve. He wasn't carrying extra weight. <laughs> You could see his pecs. I'm about to Google Tom Brady shirtless through the years. I remember he was dancing down at the the beach somewhere. He didn't look great. Eli Manning never really had that. Or Peyton. Oh, Eli has a great shirtless shot, too. Yeah. At the beach, right? The little pail. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, another poll question. It's it's the size of that pail that really emasculates him. (laughs) Big (laughs) pail. Nice pail. Um... I think that's a poll question. Do you care if your quarterback is buff? In shape, but I don't know how you want to put it. They're oh. all in shape, guys. They're oh, professional the, athletes. I just Googled Tom Brady shirtless. It is not professional athlete level. Wow. This is like five years ago. He totally changed everything now. He's in broadcast. He could probably do HGH for free now. He transformed <laughs> he his body. Before. I watch a dumb Facebook series, and he's like, I am not going to lift any weights. It's all about pliability and avocado ice cream. So he was, you don't have to be muscular to be an NFL quarterback, which is inspiring to me as someone who's not muscular. <laughs> I think it's too late otherwise. Still time for you. Uh, Can I see that picture? He has bigger s- moves than me. <laughs> you got moves? A little bit. You want to do that on a work computer? <laughs> this is for a lot of uh, personal But I have to be honest. They also, Giselle's in a bikini in this, so anybody's going to look bad next to that. Or Where's that bad. picture? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, uh, okay. Now I'm now I'm down to <laughs> Giselle bikini. Uh, yeah. yeah. Show yeah. it to Maggie. Uh, Listen, I got to be honest. I So I worked with Bart Scott for a while, and yeah. he always said if he had Tom Brady's body, he would be in a depressed yeah. <laughs> they go into a hole crawl into a hole and be depressed he's like I, I never wanted Tom Brady's body is it amazing I think we've discovered something Mahomes not a great body Brady not a great body I think in this draft cycle you're going to look for the chubby quarterback <laughs> <laughs> chubby <laughs> I don't know who's it's Caleb, chubby out of this plump. cycle Bo well Nicks, I don't Michael think Penix, I don't think Caleb great Williams. Shape. Caleb Williams is not exactly ripped as far as I know. He might have a little tummy. Big boned, husky. <laughs> He's a thick guy. Um, yeah, Joe Milton out uh, of Tennessee is, 
he's built like Cam Newton, so he's off the board. I think Plump. Tua's kind of st- stout. Yeah, Tua is, is definitely not a – you can't be a bodybuilder and be a quarterback because you need full fluidity in your arm, right? I don't know. I mean, Cam Newton was an MVP. He looked like he was pretty in shape. Yeah, Cal, Cam Newton's muscles had muscles. He was crazy. When you invite that kind of contact. Lamar, um, by the way, Lamar Jackson has – He's gotten way bigger. I think that's a key to his recent success. He's mm-hmm. just transformed his body to take a hit. You know, Josh the, Allen's not ripped, but he could take a hit. The other thing, too, about quarterbacks, this is what always happens because they're on the field with guys who are like six, five, and 320 pounds. It's like, oh, that guy doesn't look that big. Guys, they're huge in real life. Quarterbacks are massive, even those quote-unquote short ones. If you stood next to Baker Mayfield, you wouldn't be like, wow, what a small guy. That, really? that, that no, would no. not cross your mind. Baker, he's not small, but Tua and Brock Purdy have struck me as particularly not big. Tua especially. No, but he's going to be like Kyler Murray. Like, they're not yeah. going to be slight. Got it, got yeah. it, yeah. Kyler I mean, Murray's a big Brock dude. Purdy last year. I didn't think, he didn't come across as small to me, but he's not as big as like Boomer Esiason down the hall or something. Boomer's but. gigantic. I mean, Joe, Joe Flacco is like seven foot three. He's the <laughs> Wemby. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, man, boobs, bogus is here. I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, thanks. You lay, lay up. Uh, How as, are you? <laughs> as we've suspected, LeBron and Anthony Davis are the problem on the Lakers. Hook pass in the corner to Hayes. Right back to Reeves. Three pointer by Austin. Good again. Austin Reeves with arguably his best game as a Laker. Has 28 points, and he's 7 of 9 from 3. John Ireland on Lakers Radio. Austin Reeves, a season-high 32 on a career-high 7 threes to lead a 114-105 win in Boston. LeBron out because of his left ankle. AD has Mm. a sore Achilles and hip. Get out of here. Neither of those things are true. Head coach Darvin Ham on his B team getting the W. I just think it came from the guys knowing that uh, no one probably believed that we had a chance tonight. Um, and I told him before the game, you know, it does, no one man has to step up and carry the, the, the big load that our uh, two captains not being there presents. It has to be a team effort. Meanwhile, the Celtics have now dropped three of five at home after a 20 and 0 start. Wait, wait, wait. Bogus, are you telling me that these injuries are real? What they said about LeBron? Uh, and so Anthony Davis has left hip spasms? That's real? I, That's I, what is that? This is just painful. pure load management. Uh, I mean, I, I've not seen them recently, to, and haven't had my hands on them to fully diagnose. Here's it, the injury: literally your hands I believe on Anthony all Davis NBA hip. teams. Anthony Davis has bilateral <laughs> Achilles tendinopathy. That means both Achilles and left hip spasm. Yeah, it's is a, that like listen, Dak Prescott warming up, like left hip yeah. spasm? What does that mean? Listen, we're lucky these guys are even walking around right now with those kind of injuries. Mm-hmm. And LeBron James has left ankle peroneal tendinopathy. Yeah, there's a GoFundMe page for Anthony <laughs> Davis. He needs help with his medical bills. So I'm going to see the game tomorrow at at the Garden. I'm assuming at the Garden with all those stars around, including myself, LeBron's going to play, right? I, I don't know why I'm looking at you, Bogus, like you determined this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. Those guys don't miss the New York game yeah. often. And those guys also both really hate Boston. They hate playing in Boston? They hate the city. They oh, both like don't. they wanted yeah. to rob yeah, like Boston. Yeah, Davis basically was basically, you know, threatening the revolt if he got traded to the Celtics. And LeBron has talked about how much he hates Boston. So, so. he wanted to de- deprive those fans from watching I think, his I think, greatest. Honestly, I think that for LeBron, that's definitely it. AD, look, that guy, I- I'm going to believe any injury he has because he's always hurt. Yeah. That'd be amazing if they put D, <laughs> if they put DNP spite. <laughs> <laughs> Not playing why spite. It's like a Seinfeld episode. Not playing why. Don't like you. How about that? <laughs> and I just said it to your face. Don't like you. <laughs> Tyrese Maxi. Wait, hold on. Sorry. Perloff's going to the garden tomorrow of course with he your is. anti-garden takes. But uh, what's your plan here? Is this a day game? Is it a night game? What's your eight, situation? Oh, it's eight thirty at night. Uh, Who are you taking? Taking, taking my wife. Um, so it's either my daughter knows who the celebrities are. So yeah. that's very helpful. She's my 13 year old daughter, but this is the big one. This is probably the biggest game in the garden. The, the Knicks are red hot. Might it's a be, big game. could easily be LeBron's last time in the garden. Theoretically. I mean, I guess. possibly, or at least He's possibly, play at least 50. possibly be, this is maybe the biggest regular season game to go to. I can't think of anything else. Um, you can wear your Sixers jersey. No, 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 no. I mean, this. so I'm sitting, uh, my buddy, Dr. Rock Positano, gets me the seats. He's partners with the Knicks. I'm not going to disrespect. I'm not going to wear a Sixers jersey. No, you that's, can't be that. That's guy. lame, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, and I don't, it's not for a Sixers thing or anything. Anybody who goes to a game with two teams and wears some other team's jersey or hat, <laughs> right. you are a loser. Wait, hold Bones. on. Can I have one caveat to that? Because I agree with you, but can I have one caveat? 
I I think the people living in London, if you're living abroad and you're a big football fan and it's like, I'm just here to be, okay, so this is, my friend's living in London when the okay. Giants went to go play. And he's like, oh, it was actually just tons of Americans who were there. It was like a big expat party where you don't get a lot to do a lot of things with just American people. So it was kind of like a football festival. I think I think, I think I can allow those rules outside the country. That's right. fine. Okay, thank if you. If you are doing a game, there's a game in America. Yeah. And there's a home team and a road team. And you show up in a Yankee hat. You're a clown. Well, how about this? What about the jersey of someone of someone who's playing on the court when they were on a different team? Clown. Oh, that's fine. Wait, so you can't show up with a LeBron James Cavs jersey? No, come on, he's on the Lakers now. Get a jersey, get a new jersey. Yeah, I, I think what the, if you're from Ohio. Yeah, or like, I mean, and they're not five dollars, so that I think I can allow. But the and I don't know where it comes from when you wear a non-involved team's gear to a game. Like, are you declaring that I'm here for nobody? <laughs> like, I don't understand what you're trying. So, no, to, I'm actually a Broncos fan. Guys. To make yeah. Get it through themselves. your head. Yeah, but wait, does this actually happen? Yes, oh, yes. all the time. Really? Yeah. Yes, yes. And for Mets fans, I know Bogus B can apply. I mean, the Yankee hats and Yankee jerseys that show up. At a Mets Braves game is just like, what are you doing? Right. But that's like, different. There's I don't two even baseball see the Yankee teams. Yankee logo anymore. That's just like, uh, it's like the it, it, we're in New York City, so maybe that's why it's like it's like city wallpaper. I don't even see it. No, you could go to City Fields. I mean, a, a, almost every baseball game I've been to, there's like there's multiple teams represented, yeah. as if people think they need to wear Their baseball stuff, stuff oh. to a baseball <laughs> game, or they don't want to be associated with the Mets or the Cubs. So they show up in their Giants jersey. Well, what? It makes you know no that sense. people aren't going to be listening and be like, why don't you guys lighten up? <laughs> it's no, a, no, it's there a are shirt. rules. The only thing I can def- defend is if somebody is making a, is traveling to each stadium and they're doing a tour and they're mm-hmm. maybe a Reds fan and they're coming to City Field or they're coming to um, uh, to Citizens Bank and they want to see each team and they're wearing their jersey. Uh, that's the only thing that I think works. The Other than that, yeah, take a hike. <laughs> Uh, I think it's safe. strict rules here. Meanwhile, pearl off bandwagons on every team yeah. in the continental United States, but God forbid you wear a honestly, different jersey. Pearl off earned a lot of respect for me saying that I'm not going to show up in the Sixers gear. I'm not. I'm make, not that kind of loser. No sense. Also, he's getting tickets gifted. You can't. Also, and beats hurt. I'm not. I'm not flying my Sixers smoke. fan right now. But <laughs> the only thing, it doesn't matter what you wear. Football is the only thing that really matters. What you wear a jersey to, right? Like nobody's going to beat you up at a baseball game for wearing the opposite, <laughs> unless what? you're in L. A. Yeah. But football. <laughs> but jerseys in football games is really important. Like Boston that, and Yankees for a while. That would like, get you beat up. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, baseball is so much lower stakes. Go to a football game. It Wait, really matters what you're wearing. You like you show up in an imposing jersey. Like get ready. You don't remember Suns and Four guy. The guy basically yeah. was the, the hero of the playoffs. It's yeah, but come on. I mean, NFL. No, that could, guy. Go to a go to an Eagles game in a Giants jersey, EJ, and tell me that no, that's people, bad. But I'm just saying, yeah. you go to any arena in a, a opposing team jersey, there is some. Look, I'm someone who went to a Lakers game, so I went to two games for the Knicks: Lakers, Clippers. I did a double header in LA. Yes, yeah. Clippers, no issues. No f- fans didn't give me nothing. No, no one's even paying talking. attention. Nobody cared. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nobody. You're always watching the game. Yeah, Knicks were like winning by 14 points, and I'm like, "Are you guys gonna get into the game?" They didn't care. I went to the Laker game. That was an experience. Heckled, heckled, yelled at, cursed at, and with my girlfriend for a Lakers. Wow, I'm surprised. The, La- the Lakers fans. Lakers fans people, are, are they, I've been to a Lakers. Yeah, I've been they, to a Lakers game. It was totally mellow. Well, because you were probably wearing regular gear. Yeah. Wear the opponent's team, posing team's gear, and your team's getting your ass kicked, and and figure out how that goes for you. That's not been my experience. NBA games are like, I don't know, whatever. They're just not as high stakes. Football, I I'd love to see uh, you guys. EJ, you're a Jets fan. Just wear that. That's like really dangerous, right? NBA can't. No one's going to beat you up in an NBA game, are they? Well, that sons and four guy. Sons and four. Yeah, that, that, he, that, he beat that up two guys. That was rough. Uh, Bogus, what else you got for headlines? Uh, I got Tyrese Maxey. He's a first-time All-Star, and he scored a career-high 51 in last night's 127-124 Sixer win in Utah. Philly needed all those points because Joel Embiid is now out with a lateral meniscus injury in his left knee, and yet nobody is retiring Maxey's number just yet. (laughs) Jalen Brunson scoring just 40 after getting his first All-Star nod, needing two more years than Maxey to accomplish that. The Knicks snuck past the Pacers 109-105 for a nine-game win streak. The Commanders have yet to officially name Dan Quinn their hotel roomie, but the Cowboy D.C., is their new head coach with D.C. Mike McDonald now in charge in Seattle. The Ravens giving his old job to inside linebackers coach Zachary Orr 
And Cliff Kingsbury is expected to become the Raiders' offensive coordinator. Men's college hoops. Nebraska is good at rallying against Wisconsin. Wiltshire comes down the right side. He may have to hoist on the sideline. Bounces it into mast. Puts it up. Got it! That's from Learfield, rank mast, helping the Huskers beat the sixth-ranked Badgers 80-72 in overtime after trailing by 18 shortly after halftime. A year ago, Nebraska raced a 17-point hole against Wisconsin. And does everybody remember former Alabama baseball coach Brad Bohannon, the guy accused of betting on one of his games? The NCAA punished Bohannon yesterday, slapping him with a 15-year show cause penalty, which means if a school wanted to hire him, they'd have to prove to the NCAA why they had absolutely no other choice than him. (laughs) (laughs) This guy's lucky he's not in a Turkish prison somewhere. And if someone was able to actually hire him, they'd have to suspend Bohannon for the first five regular seasons of their agreement so no (laughs) one's going to hire him. Uh, And we now know the specifics of what he did. He was scratching his starting pitcher, so he called a buddy to place a bet on the game before he told the other team and the public about the pitching change. Uh, And that is how all hell broke loose, and here we are now. I'm surprised he's not banned. I mean, mean, they basically basically did, but they should have. You're right, Pete. Just make it official. But here's the other part about that. So this is why you really got to know who you're associating with. So the coach knows that the starting pitcher is going to get scratched. So he knows this team's going to lose. Yeah. Calls this guy, Mm -hmm. and the dude goes and places a $100,000 bet on a college baseball game when the maximum is 15000 which is still extremely large for a college baseball game, in my opinion. $100,000, $100,000, you doofus. Of course you guys are all going to get caught. This is this coach, who's he associating with? Yeah. Frickin' frack? That is so <laughs> stupid. And the other guy also told other people to place the same bet. I got a tip. This makes Donaghy look like some kind of mastermind. Yes. Well, uh, the other thing is, I wouldn't trust him around, uh, around uh, kids. Of course around, not. Around, around He's going to shank around, somebody for have, five grand. Right. I, like, I, I'm, uh, I'm a parent sending my kid to Alabama, and, and, and this guy's going to be uh, betting on my kid? I don't I mean, trust him. Lost. I don't trust him, not just around the baseball team, any other team. He's really cutting get, the brakes on right. somebody of Jalen Milrow's car. <laughs> he only gets 15 years show calls. I mean, get, get him out of here. Yeah, I actually don't know like what the NCAA can do if there is a way for yeah, them to, throw them out. to ban you. But I've never heard a 15-year show cause. This is this is almost like the death penalty. Yeah. Like, it's 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 as bad as I... To get a, a show cause for 15 years for college baseball is just amazing. insane. I yeah, mean, five is the longest I can remember for all the basketball and football yeah. nonsense. I can't yeah. remember anybody more than five, like but 15 is crazy. I slightly disagree with you, Maggie. Say you had a sure thing bet. <laughs> I would you how much would you put on say you knew what was gonna okay. happen in a college baseball game, you have to make it worth your while. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. What do you always say? If you're gonna cheat, you can't get a hundred. But yeah. still, you what's the point if you have inside information of betting eight thousand dollars? That's you does get to nothing. Keep, you get to keep the gravy train going right. if you don't raise suspicion. So, yeah. okay. Play the long game here. Right. And you need to know the rules. Like that he should have known he's a professional gambler. He should have known there was a cap. Yeah. And not try to destroy because that's what the I think that was the first bell that rang was like why does this guy want to put a hundred k on a random Bama LSU baseball game? So I watched a Netflix documentary on the Arizona uh, State cheating scandal of the eighties. They they were point shaving. The guy would go to ten different casinos and put nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars because at ten thousand the report kicks in. Yeah, so you got to be smart about right. this. Uh, they figured it out in about three days. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in like nineteen eighty. Yeah, they're like, why are there forty thousand Arizona State teenagers? boys here betting ten thousand dollars on the team but i don't know i feel like if you knew who's gonna win the super bowl wouldn't you want to put a hundred thousand i guess you could you could bury that bet college bait your point that college baseball is obvious there aren't a lot of huge bets coming i mean so specific real subtle 100k (laughs) on lsu baseball just out of the off the top of my head Who's doing that? And like <laughs> waving guys to the window with you. Like, come on, guys. Also, We're all doing it. But if you didn't know. If wasn't you it in Cincinnati, too? It yes, was in he, Vegas. Yeah, he was in Cincinnati. Yeah. It would just kill me to know something and only get $400 out all right, of it. All right, Biff. I mean, what are you doing <laughs> here? Uh, obsessed. You got the almanac? You My gotta... entire dream life is to time travel and win sports bets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I spent half my day fantasizing yeah, about I that. Mean, are you, you guys like that, too? The Biff and yeah, uh, Back you, to Future, too? You could solve world peace. You could maybe, like, avoid climate crisis. Oh, so no, you would no. go at just 
just so you could bet $100,000 on LSU baseball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to live bet the Falcons Patriots Super Bowl at halftime, <laughs> and I am on easy street for life. I've got it all worked out. <laughs> the second time travel becomes available, I am going back. And that's the game. Bet right. the Giants money line in 11. I have all these bets. I've <laughs> everyone knows your idea. Be you alone know. now. Meanwhile, now it's meanwhile, a race. Meanwhile, someone will adjust time and f- fix the ending of that Super Bowl. You'll lose. Oh, see, someone figured out time travel before you figured out time travel. Oh. Came mm. back and made the Falcons win that game. Okay. Christopher Kyle Nolan run the ball a few times. Right. Just put Julian Ed- hide Julian Edelman's uh, helmet. We're getting into Inception. Like I yes. think I think we're getting a screenplay out of this. This <laughs> is brilliant. Before I you like... know what, we're back in the cavemen days, just banging each other <laughs> on the head with bones, <laughs> <laughs> all just... trying to lead to a Tom Brady comeback. And <laughs> I mean. Yes, the only way to do it right is to go back to day one and just <laughs> yeah, begin to climb out of the primordial ooze. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm standing. <laughs> 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 Better get a handle on this Belichick Brady. Then. Also, Jags down 27 3 last year. <laughs> Bingo, DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get your, your home theater off these bets yeah. that you so desperately want. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what he'd do with it, too. Yeah. It's like, I, instead of solving world peace and to make humanity better, I'm going back to adjust sports bets so I can get a big screen TV. Mm-hmm. No, he would get an entire the, uh, entire home made for just one theater. I can't be the only person here who's ever uh, dreamed of time traveling and winning sports bets, right? I that's everybody based on that. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Robert Zemeckis thought it up yeah, yeah. 30 it, years ago. It's, it's actually my, it's right now one of my best life plans. It's all I got. <laughs> uh, did you really think that you possibly had a unique idea about that? No, I, I know I don't. I, that's what I'm saying. We all, we're all in on that, right? Like, But you never think about, oh man, if I just go back to last weekend and bet on this game. <laughs> think about it today. Hey, like, hey, if I could win, win a bet now and uh, I'll see you uh, run my own station. Don't you want? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what you do with it. I, after the uh, last week, I'm like, Chiefs Ravens under. I should have seen that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you, Bogus. Coming up, the college football ranks getting shaken up. What is going on? We'll tell you the story next. 855 212 4 CBS. Maggie and Perloff. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining.
One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. NFL and Westwood One for free. Sponsored by AutoZone all season long. You can listen to every Westwood One broadcast of the NFL live on the NFL app by asking Alexa to open Westwood One Sports or, or on the Odyssey app. Get in the zone. AutoZone. AutoZone's free battery testing and charging is available for free at your local AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Restrictions apply. The read that makes me sad, Maggie. Why? Only one more week of NFL football. It's okay. We're going to get through it. Uh, are we? Are we? Well, no promises. Uh, <laughs> 855-212-4CBS. But we still have this week coming up to enjoy and revel in the Super Bowl. Gary is in Jacksonville, though, wants to weigh in on another big topic from yesterday. Hey, Gary, how are you? Good morning, my friends. I am so fired up for my Baltimore Orioles. Between the new ownership change, we finally may be a player in free agency. And how about that acquisition of Corbin Burns to that team? How about that? I mean, the Orioles won 101 games last year, completely turned the franchise around, and now you land a top-of-the-rotation starter and former oh, Cy Young winner. And, and Jackson Holiday will probably be up next. Oh, oh, Maggie. And the other part, Gary, is the team's getting the sold. Leaders. That's like this is you've hit the you've hit the jackpot as a fan. Team's getting sold. You're making moves, <laughs> and all of that losing is paid off. I mean, it's the only way to turn around your franchise, Perloff, is you have That's to go through. That's why team, Maggie, right through the bad times because the good times are that much better. I know, Steve. It's so funny, though, because, and Gary, enjoy it, revel in it. Super mm. fun to watch the Orioles. But here's I, the thing. Yeah. When you're a team like, and I hate to make this about the Yankees, but if you're a team like the Yankees, you can never do this. You can never bottom out in the way that the Orioles did. But it's like the only way to really turn your team around. The Astros have done it. The Rangers, to an extent, have done it. The Orioles did it. It's working to perfection. Ooh, I'm a, I'm a lot more dubious than you guys. Like I mean, the Orioles. I don't know. We've this seen, is awesome for them. We've seen them have one off years, and this the whole AL East. These teams come spend a ton of money. I I'm I got the see Orioles. It. This is all these homegrown guys. Uh, this is. I I've, obviously I don't follow that closely, but I am very do all AL East teams get so overhyped that I feel like the Orioles are going to follow down that path. Oh man, I don't. I think we're looking at a this is like this is all the fruits of your of your losing. <laughs> I'm say fruits of your labor. <laughs> it's all the fruits of your losing paying off with all these high draft picks and then you know when to strike to add someone like Corbin Burton. This is cool for them. Gunnar Henderson, uh Rushman, they Adley got, Rushman. Adley, Adley Rushman. They got dogs. They got dogs. Now you add now you add Burns to that rotation. That was really their main weakness was that they had no starting pitching. Yeah. I I'm I, it's always good. It's going to be a tough division because the Yankees aren't going anywhere. They just tried traded for Juan Soto. You know, you have the Blue Jays, of course. I mean, how how dormant are the Red Sox going to be? But this is awesome if you're the Orioles fan. All right. And that concludes our Orioles discussion on this Friday. We get back to football in just a moment, including 
the one trend we're seeing in college football that's bleeding to the pros. We get that next. Thank you, Perla. Their job. Could have made. remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Thirty 
15 seconds. Break ends in five seconds. She can run the 40 faster than Tom Brady. He got a perfect score on the Wonderlick. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. How is college football affecting the NFL coaching cycle? Hey, welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. Perloff, beyond the obvious, Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan to go coach the Los Angeles Chargers. We've seen guys go back and forth between college and the pros before, but there's a new... I don't want to call it a trend yet, but borderlining on a trend of assistant coaches, uh, excuse me, head coaches in college yep. taking assistant coaching and coordinating jobs in the NFL. And the reason is a little surprising. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's crazy because I think some of them are even making less money and jumping to the NFL. Want to explain? So Pete Thamel from ESPN put this out when Jeff Halfley, who was the head coach of Boston College, spent four seasons there, is now leaving to become the defensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers. And according to Thamel and sources inside of uh, a source told him, he wants to go coach football again in a league that is all about football. College coaching has become fundraising, NIL, and recruiting your own team and transfers. There's no time to coach football anymore a lot of things that he went back to college for have disappeared so the idea that the coaches are fed up with the direction that college football has gone the transfer portal nil how it's changed the landscape and this is driving guys maybe back to the nfl another coach is ryan grubb who just left Washington to go with Kalen DeBoer to be the offensive coordinator at Alabama, now is at least in consideration to become the offensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, that's a crazy move, too. Uh, they don't. It, it makes it sound like they're a bit, I don't want to say lazy, but the work of college football is 12 months a year with no vacation, and people hate fundraising. Is there anything yeah. you hate? You hate fundraising. You hate that you have to recruit your own players. Uh, to me, another one, Chip Kelly apparently interviewed twice for the Raiders offensive coordinator job, the UCLA coach. And to me, like Chip Kelly has not worked in the NFL at all. Why does that guy want out of college football? It must be really dire. My read on this was like, ooh, this, this, these jobs stink right now. Well, I think we all realize that this is going to – we're going through this really big change now with college football because you are you see that the powers that be um, were – on Capitol Hill, like I think begging politicians to get involved and try to get some kind of uniform NIL sort of, um, you know, something that's a little more above board and and put on paper. And at the, the same time, you have multiple lawsuits that are going now in college football that are trying to, you know, secure players' rights and secure NIL rights. But the transfer portal, that's staying. I, yeah. I don't know how you can try to manage around it or put different time frames and windows on it like they've done. But the transfer portal is going to continue to be, you know, a great thing for some college coaches and also a mm. new obstacle where you're constantly recruiting your own guys. Well, I could fix all this, What's by that? the way. Just start paying the players and make it above board. Uh, the There was a report the other day that the NCAA has one point, made $1.8 billion last year. Pay the players, and then you don't have to do all this sort of extra work with NIL because NIL is a bit of a circus, right? You don't, there's no definition of what the deal is. Just have some sort of structure, right? Okay. Have a salary cap. Just do it normally. Would that cut out a lot of the work? It would, but I mean, I think there's a lot of steps to get there. And, and why? What steps? Well, the, you got to unionize the players. They, easy. Uh, is it? Yes. Why they, would they've done it then? Because they tried in 15 or 16 and came really close. Next time they try it, they're going to win that fight. Okay, so then you've got to build a union. Who's going to be your representation? What are you fighting for? I mean, it's hard. Look at unions right now across the country. Go, there's. I mean, I know in our business, it's been really difficult. You're, what are you fighting for? How do you make sure that you're getting a fair deal? Who's going to represent the college football players union? I mean, you're right. Unions in general are having problems, but not pro sports unions. Those guys are making millions and millions and millions. Just yeah. get the, Just get someone from the NFLPA to come over and do it the same exact way. 
I don't know if the NFLPA has been winning a lot of these battles, quite frankly. But the other part is transfer portal's not going anywhere, right? You can't yeah. you can't put that toothpaste back in the tube. I, if anything, I think we get more and more player movement. That's true. The transfer portal is probably a tough thing. I think the day to day of NIL is is makes recruiting much harder. Think about it. You used to be able to come in and charm families, and now you can't do that anymore. Now it's you're dealing with agents. I don't think most recruiters are, are equipped for this, and they don't want to do it anymore. Okay, well, the more cynical amongst us would say, haven't big-time programs been paying players forever? So now it's like a, yeah. with a collective and the boosters, but the boosters have always had a big say. But you're adding so many more steps with NIL because now you're have to. Now you dealing with a lot more open competition. I think the boosters just, Alabama came in there and handed them a bag of money. Now you have to deal with CAA and who knows what kind of mess. I know, but again, it's like the same idea, right? It's like if we believe, and again, don't want to be cynical about it, but if we believe that college athletes have been getting paid for a long time just under the table, this shouldn't really be a reason why the coaches want to leave college to get to the NFL. I I think the big part is transfer portal. They they don't want... They want to be... Not all of them, not all college football coaches, but I think a good amount of them want to be able to coach with a little bit of fear, like instill just a little bit of fear. Like you have to do what I say and follow my lead or else, you know, I have control over your future. You don't anymore with the transfer portal. So I think that's the college football coaches. I don't know how you fix that. Well, there's two things. Also, NIL and transfer portal are very connected because players have a huge incentive to leave to get a new NIL deal. So you you have to leave because – Basically, if you're a good sophomore at Pittsburgh, for example, you know you have a million-dollar payday in the SEC. you got to take it. So it, even if you like the coach, you you have to leave for financial reasons. So the whole thing, if you pay the players, I think you get rid of a lot of this. I think there's some part of the paying the players that I think can fix this that Pearl was mentioning. I think it does have to do with the transfer portal. Because I agree. I think the transfer portal, honestly, is the bigger issue for these coaches than NIL specifically because they've had boosters paying these guys. Right. The problem is guys can leave without any – fear of having to miss a year or whatever. I I think what they have to do is they need to be giving out scholarships like we give out contracts in um in in the NFL or in the NBA. It should be all right, we we you make them more binding. So we've signed you to a three year scholarship contract. So in that contract you can't say, well I'm just transferring schools. Like you you need to make that more binding. Because they've been getting away with the one and done thing for years, and it benefited them because they could just say, hey, if you don't do what I say, I'll just take your scholarship away and tell you to get lost. Now kids are using that against them, saying, okay, this is a one-year thing. I can just go wherever the hell I want. Wait, but here's – so that's – it's fine. We're talking about college football coaches and sometimes head coaches now who are leaving college to go become coordinators at the NFL level. And one of the thoughts is that – the NFL level is actually more about coaching than college. College is about being a fundraiser and NIL and constantly recruiting. So the the flip side of that, though, okay, so this comes back to the players of a union. You sign a three-year deal to go play at the University of Washington. Can I get traded? Can I leave if I really don't like it? Can I break my contract? Like, these are the questions that, you know, can I ask for a trade? Can I go public with my trade demands? You know, you get into the same thing with the NFL, but specifically – does the coach still have power to trade you if you're under contract? Yeah, and that's that would be a good question. I don't think they should. I think that you. Sh- I think that it should be just we take out everything about how we do it in the NFL and the NBA. I just take out the fact that you can be traded or cut because I think that in the end of the day, that's the biggest issue is that guys have this one year deals and they have no guarantee that they'll play beyond the year that they're there, right? Um, and that they'll be kept on the team. If you take that out and say, okay, fine. You will make uh, these more binding, and we'll give you a contract like a normal NFL contract, but it said it's just your scholarship contract. But that means, hey, you know, we signed a two-year deal. You can't leave in a year. You, like, you have to stay for two years. And I think, honestly, that will help the sport because I, I know we love college football, uh, but I think college football and definitely college basketball on a bigger level has been hurt by these guys just moving team to team. We, we root for laundry, but not being able to follow these guys. I think college football had a big advantage that these guys had to stay three years in, in the NFL uh, before it, going to the NFL. EJ, it sounds like you're... Like that's kind of surprisingly an anti-player take. Like you're taking all the power away from the players. You're saying just I know there's some players who lose their scholarship, but we're talking about guys at at lower schools who can make ton of money no, by you, going you to the better you, school. You can negotiate wherever you want. You can say no, I'm only I'm only signing a one year deal, and perhaps that means okay, if you're a college now, you have the thing say okay, well I'm not gonna go and complain this guy leaves in one year, you made that deal. If the number one recruit says I want to be free, I'm gonna be LeBron James. Yeah, of I'm course. Why, why would you not do that? 
but not every kid can do that. Or like, maybe, not every maybe kid some is, kids want a little more stability. Right, I mean, or more money. Maybe you say, hey, we'll give you more money if you give us two years, it gives three a years. bigger commitment. Right, if exactly. you're Will Anderson Jr., and we, you'll, we'll give you more money if you commit to us for all three make years. It a, I mean, the question is that what happens, you know, like the transfer portal right now opens again if your coach leaves, yeah. right? Like you get 30 extra days now if your coach leaves. What happens with that? Like and at the college level, at the pro level, SOL. You, you get signed by one regime, a new regime comes in, got to make it work. Well, again, if I'm now the, the commissioner of the college football, because I've been thinking, the you, pro thinks about bets, I've thought about this for years. <laughs> yeah. If I, was college, I would say coaching contracts are binding just like the NFL. A guy can't just go and say, oh, I know I got 10 years left in my deal, but I'm going to go coach the Patriots. You can't do that. Okay, like, but, oh, but here's the other though. What about the upward mobility of it? Like, are you really going to keep a guy in college if he wants to go to the pro level? What if what if the player wants to go pro? You sign him to a two-year deal. He's got three years under his belt. He signs a two-year deal yeah. but has a season of all time and could be a top-five pick all of a sudden out of the blue. You're going to say you have to come back to well, Florida well, State? Well, in college football, I mean, you're talking about it's three years in college football. Right. So, I mean, three years, four. I mean, that, I don't think they're going to have that much issue with that because it's – it's three years, then you can go to the NFL anyway. So, I was thinking about who signed, like, I mean, if you're signing a four or five year deal, I mean, I don't think a lot of guys would do that. No, I'm like, well, now guys stay in college for so long. Like, if you're Bo Nix or something, and you are a little bit more of a late bloomer, and you went from a guy who was never going to be, and, and he was right. sniffed the first round of the I mean, draft, I think, and now and you're going to be the NFL, top 10 that's pick. different. I mean, I think that if they want to go say, oh, I'm going to leave college entirely, I'm not going to, com- I'm not then going to, break I'm not going to competitor. I'm going to a, a different job, literally. Yeah. That's fine. You can do that. But I, I, I do think that making everybody's contracts more binding would fix a lot of the issues mm-hmm. with college football. By the way, the problem is not just transfer. Look at the recruits. The recruits are now, how many times, look at every time. How many schools has Dylan Raiola played for already? And the guy's never even <laughs> stepped on the <laughs> field. He's still in high school. He went from Ohio State to Georgia to Nebraska. Julian Sayan's already on his second school. Like, it's you're a coach. You're losing all your recruits because they're committing and that's really just like, here's my asking price. I'll go to right. Florida for a million unless you come in with 1.5. Right. So if there's a more open negotiation, I, I think it's a mess right now. Uh, it is. And here, I, I just, we know that it's going to, the change has to come, right? We, I mean, we've already saw one Power Five conference basically just disintegrate into dust over 18 months. Pac-12, I mean, you mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's just been so many changes that have happened in such a rapid way. Hell, NIL and Transfer Portal happened basically like at the drop of a hat. It was while everyone was basically, you know, um, distracted by the pandemic. And we yeah. really saw the difference between athletes and stu- student athletes and students. It was the, the whole system crumbled in front of our eyes. Yeah, basically. the courts, the, both both political parties are anti-NCAA. Yeah. Everybody agrees on one thing. The NCAA is no good. The, uh, the other thing, too, the money is so huge. I mean, that... Listen, you're spinning. As the pie gets bigger, the players are going to want more of it, okay, and, but, and they should. And you guys got got guys like Jim Harbaugh. Like this is insane. Well, the other part is, how do you know that there's some kind of big inefficiency going on in this market? If you just want to distill it down, look at all the private equity that's trying to get in. You have literally private equity firms that are trying to buy into mm. Florida State or conferences. And we talked about this at the time because it became a big topic with Live Golf. I was like, wait for the Saudi money to come in. I, the the money's going to get bigger and bigger. Anyway, a little sidebar there. 855-212-4CBS. <laughs> Adrian's in Maryland. Good morning, Adrian. Hey, good morning, guys. Happy Friday. Hey, I told EJ I'm 100% with him. They need to have contracts on these kids, and if they decide they need to go to a new school, they have to sit out a year. And you got guys now that no, are We're never playing. going back to that, Adrian. We're never going back to guys sitting out I a just, year. But you, you got to put some kind of contract on these guys. Because what the coaches are upset about, they did all the hard work. They did all the tough lifting to get these kids in in school. Then they get there for one year and they're gone the next. Yep. So so that's the problem. And that's what the guy's talking about, you know. He, they want to develop these kids and make them good pros. They don't want to, to develop them for a year, then, then another coach take over, and then you say, well, this coach did this. And got him to the NFL. Well, no, wait, it could have. Adrian, hold it on. Been the guy that recruited him. The coaches so that, want it both ways. They want the guys that they, that the really talented ones, they want to come in and keep. And they also wanted to use the transfer portal to to use and poach guys from other schools. So, like the coaches, they want it, They want both. They want to. They want to dip into the high school aspect and the and the transfer portal. Well, the, well, the transfer portal. I don't like it because it starts too early. It starts before the bowl game. Yeah. It's, 
just make it like the NFL and have it be a free agency window instead of, you know, before the bowl games and things like that. Yeah. It's just it's crazy. They have no formation in, in the NCAA to, 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 to keep it correctly going. No, it's, I, it's, it's, a, it's broken right now, Adrian. Thank you so much. It's weird to say this and appreciate you. It's weird to say about a billion dollar industry. It's like, man, that is broken. Like usually <laughs> the, the, the systems that are, you know, broke are yeah. broken. This is not broke. Well, that being said, I mean, we're all going to sit and watch whatever game next year and not even think twice about any of this. I mean, these games are going to be great as always. It's not totally broken. Yes, behind the scenes. And obviously, I don't think Jeff Halfley leaving means college football is doomed. The ratings are going to be enormous next year. Next year is going to be awesome. It could be tweaked here. Do you remember Dion's tweet the day that Nick Saban retired? No, what did he say? He said, you done run out, you've run the goat uh-huh. out of the sport. Oh, yeah. Like, that Saban would have stayed. I mean, listen, Saban has enjoyed free labor for a long, long time, so no one's crying for Saban, but... But I think college football had record ratings last year. They're definitely going to... Next year is going to be bananas. There's going to be a lot of ratings. When you go to 12 teams, I think the interest is going to go up. So the sport is broken, quote-unquote. It's never been this successful, ironically. We, we can make, I mean, NIL has done the, it has not hurt the sport, its popularity. It's, it's, if anything, it's enhanced it. So is the transfer portal because otherwise we wouldn't even see these players on the field. So it is all good. And uh, by the way, all this is great in January. Come September, let's all sit around and watch the Texas game. I mean, right? 855 2124 CBS, 855 212 4227. We get back to the Super Bowl in just a moment. The matchup, we've got questions. Also, I don't want to say this lightly because I don't want to lose credibility with our audience. The next story we're going to bring you is the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. There's not a worse idea on earth. There's not a combination of bad ideas that you could put together that are as bad as this idea. They say there are no bad ideas, no stupid questions. This was a stupid question. It's a terrible idea. We'll tell you about it next. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining.
two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Uh, Maggie and Perloff, uh, I don't know if you were on social media yesterday, Maggie, but the Dan Quinn hire in Washington got received with the collective shrug from the entire Mid-Atlantic region. Nobody was excited about it. He's a good coach, but it's he's a good coach, but he's nothing different. I think there was a retread feel. And I'll tell you who was leading the whole movement was uh, longtime Washington sports analyst and reporter Grant Paulson. One stat he said about hiring Dan Quinn this caught my eye. This is on Twitter. The Super Bowl will be played between two offensive-minded head coaches for the fifth consecutive year. Uh, this is an offensive coordinator league, and he also has a good point. Offensive coordinators generally have better defenses than the defensive coordinator coaches. This is It's really risky. I know D'Amico Ryans was good, but to hire a defensive coach in 2024 is definitely a risky move. And I think that's why Washington fans are like, what are we doing here? Yeah, I get it, especially when you have the number two pick in the draft and you yeah. need a quarterback. I, I think the big fear is always, and we see this play out, is you have a defensive head coach who, with an offensive coordinator. If the offense has any kind of success, yeah. that offensive guy is likely getting poached for an off for a head coaching job, and now you've started over, and your quarterback has to yeah. learn a new language, and you've got to have a whole new voice. And we've seen before guys who have like multiple offensive coordinators in the beginning of their careers, yeah. and it's derailing for some of them. Yeah, and now the Belichick is gone. I mean, the only two that have had any success are Tomlin and McDermott. It is it's Kyle Shanahan league, and I think we're all living okay. at Ed McVay. So I, I think I think most of these defensive guys are not going to work, and it's going to be all offense. Next so year. I, I'm I'm not as down on the Dan Quinn hire it because look at where you're starting with with the Commanders. First and foremost, you got to get back to respectability. And to be mm -hmm. honest, this hiring cycle, like how they played this out, where they were the one team that you knew was firing their head coach, and yet it was the last team to hire a head coach. Something was wrong here with the timing of this. Dan Quinn's been out there for a long time. I don't know why it took them so long to get to him. But anyway, Dan Quinn immediately comes in, brings respectability, and a positivity that Belichick does, does not bring, right? Like in the building. And it's funny, and a lot of people have pointed this out, that the commanders went with the coach that blew a 28-3 to lead over the coach that orchestrated the comeback of the 28-3 to lead in Super Bowl. But at least Quinn does bring you... I think a good there there's good vibes in the building, which is don't take that for granted. And because he's been a coach for a long time, 
I imagine he has a good network of people that he would bring in a good offensive corner. Hell, he had Kyle Shanahan yeah. when he was in Atlanta. The dude can hire an offensive yeah. coach. Yeah, they got Ron Rivera 2.0, and I do not see any out. How This team is so far away. Their defense has no personnel, and they don't have a quarterback. That's so, not true in the NFC East. You're never far away in the I NFC think, East. That, that, that division rotates like a carousel. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of Josh Harris, the Sixers owner. Like, he does not always get his coaching hires right. Dan Quinn might be fine. The The Washington does not scare me. I just don't see how they build this offense to be a real factor. Look, just you cannot ignore what's happening in Detroit, what's happening in San Francisco. The fact that Sean McVay is actually building up the Rams why again. why did any defensive coach get hired? So you think I, Mike McDonald is bad. You think Raheem Morris is bad. You hate all these defensive coaches. I think they're all coaches. gone in three years. Mike McDonald has a chance. But I think Raheem Morris is in the worst spot in the league. I, I think Atlanta is is born to be mediocre. I, I don't see how he's going to get mediocre, out. Mediocre, make the playoffs. I, honestly, I'd give Dave Canales a better chance in Carolina than I would. I, Atlanta. I'll take that bet. Yeah, the organization in Atlanta is not great. I mean, they've not made good draft picks. Well, we're going to agree to disagree on that part of it. But if you want to take a bet of who's going to have the better record next year, the Carolina Panthers or the Atlanta Falcons, and we have a – actually, it's one of the commandments of the show – Thou shall not bet on the Atlanta Falcons, and I will break that commandment to make this bet with you. I'm not betting next year. I'll bet you Canales lasts longer. I'll bet you the Panthers are in a Super Bowl before the Falcons. Thou shalt not watch the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the, the addendum. I mean, the, the Falcons have really kind of screwed up every single pick for 10 years now. Know, but who's going to be in the Super Bowl first? I mean, I, no, how I long just are say we going to be alive? <laughs> a, a 37-year-old offensive coordinator is the formula. It is not... Uh, whatever Atlanta's doing. it's And I'm sorry, because Raheem Moore seems like a great great guy and a really good coach. It's a tough spot to me. Okay, I, I, let, I, I went to break with this. The worst idea I've ever heard in my life, no hyperbole. Andrew Bogish has the details for us on this horrendous, horrendous project that's about to get under undertaken. Or maybe it's genius. If Oof. Draymond Green is really bummed out about missing out on the Paris Olympics this summer, he does have some options. Here come the enhanced games. Investors like Peter Thiel of PayPal want to hold an Olympics-like event without drug testing. Eat, drink, shoot up, whatever you want. They call it pro-science Most of the rest of us call it a joke. The non-cheating athletes would have full medical supervision plus health insurance while taking any banned substance they wanted. Okay, so Peter Thiel, Thanos, okay? (laughs) This is like not the person you want running your situation. Rich guy, good for you. I don't know if anyone thinks of Peter Thiel as, uh, do some Googling. Ba- b- saying you're under doctor supervision. Who? Victor Conti? Who is running this <laughs> dumb idea? I, th- I think it's a great idea. Oh, how could you think that? What's next? Do you want to do the opioid Olympics? Do you well, want to say, hey, uh, everyone take drugs, but uh, we're going to make sure you don't overdose? Well, at least you know what's going on. But that's but what message are you sending? Like it's it's bad enough that we all know steroids existed. No, we're not celebrating it. We're not reveling in it. It's the same message we sent back in the 90s when we watched McGuire and Sosa. We cheered and we clapped and we applauded. We bought their jerseys and we celebrated them. So, you know what? At least at least you know what's going on okay, and but, at least you know what's happening. Okay, but Pete, and we can no longer share a hotel room. <laughs> but the, the, the thing the about... outdoors, no? The thing is... <laughs> a buck? Anything? Nothing? <laughs> shack? Big Bear. Big Bear chased me. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think the, the one thing is... In the 90s, I know this sounds dumb, and I was a kid, so maybe it's harder. I I was a bit blindsided by the fact that all these guys were on all this crap. I didn't know better, and maybe that's my naive take because I was, like, in fourth grade. But if if you knew they were straight up cheating the whole time, that's why baseball got a backlash that they're still in some ways digging themselves out of. Like, But wait, Maggie, will you watch any of this? No, I'm going to protest this. Okay, but let me ask you this. If I came in uh, on the Monday morning after the Tainted Olympics and I said, hey, I have some information here. I have what the all-time record in the Tainted Olympics and the 100 was compared to the normal Olympics. You wouldn't be curious about what the difference is, about what those drugs can actually do for you. You wouldn't be curious at all. You want to know why? Because you are not getting the same quality of athlete in the Tainted Olympics that you are in the regular Olympics. Makes it even more interesting. What if the guy, uh, what's the all-time record for the 100? Is it, I don't even know, 8.88? Yeah. 9.8. Nah, uh, seven, six, whatever it is. What yeah. if they shaved a second off of that piece of steroids? You wouldn't be. I don't think that'll happen. But would that oh, be if, fascinating? If you to say people? Bolt is clean, that makes me think even better of him because that means that he was actually able to beat science. I, 
like here's the here's a part about this. Okay, doctor supervision or you need this for some kind of medical thing to help like a steroid that you need for your body because you have some other deficiency or whatever. This is just to celebrate cheating. This is just, or won't be cheating here. This is just to celebrate injecting crap into your body that you do not need to what? Run the hundred? Come right. on, guys. Like, we have to be a little bit more aware of our personal health. When I watched we? the promo for this, and the, it starts with the guy being like, he looks like some, re, some regular dude. He don't look like yeah. some like uh, like some world-class printer. Yeah. And he's like, I, I beat Usain both <laughs> 100 meter record. I got so angry. I was yeah. just like, screw this guy. Is that an achievement? Congrats. You you got to shoot up and do some pharmaceuticals and you became Superman. That's not cool. We already had the oh enhanced gosh. games, the Royal Olympics. It was called American Gladiator. It's okay? called the it 80s. Came out the 80s. Which is awesome. It was a nice show it was in the a 80s. TV show. I feel like you guys, are, back there. you guys are kind of being hammering in here, kind of on a soapbox about purity of sports, whatever. You, I, I want to see these roided up monsters go at it. Why not? <laughs> Bring it on the me roided too. up football. Me and Bellotti will get some, get some wings and watch roided up football. <laughs> There's yeah. only one thing that's been improved with steroids. Baseball. It's the only thing. I don't well, think it's improved. I think I football. I think a lot of guys are on it. I mean, no, I mean, I mean, in terms of like it being quote unquote legal or whatever, like this idea that we knew the numbers were inflated because right. they were so, yeah, the steroid era was awesome. Like, I don't, like, I don't care what anybody says. You watch those games, you watch those athletes. It was awesome. There's nothing else that's been enhanced with steroids. We don't look at Ben Johnson or Flojo RIP and be like, oh, like this was so like great and amazing now. Like we don't, we still look back at steroids and say, yo, Barry Bonds is the greatest offensive player ever. We look at those other athletes and say, they were great, but I wait, mean, wait, it was enhanced. Wait, 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 stop. Steroids ruined baseball. The ratings yeah. fell off a cliff because of steroids. They fell off after. What do you mean? Right, because of the, the, because everyone's like, oh, that was garbage, what I was watching. Right, no, well, it's because people got into their feelings about the sanctity of the sport. Right. Watching the 98 home run race, that was not bad for the sport. That right, but you look back sport. on that. Yes, it was bad for the sport, obviously. Not at the because, time. Oh, in the moment it was no, good, yeah, but the it, backlash right, right, right. Has, has it was bad. It was fake, yeah. you know, so I think people, people hate when they were fooled. So I can't basically – you're saying – tell me if I'm getting this wrong. You're saying that steroids was good for baseball in the 90s because it was awesome? There's, there were fans not coming back from the strike, and they needed to have interest in the game. And guess what? People were coming to the ballpark to watch Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa and Barry Bonds hit 480-foot home runs, yeah. and it was leading every sports show and leading every news yeah. angle when those guys were on those races, and it was great – at the moment, yes. But now we all feel like idiots because we watch that, right? No, it's the opposite. Now we're like, wait a minute, why are we keeping these guys out of the Hall of Fame? Like, they're no. clearly the best players. Not everybody's like that. You might be like that, but not everybody's. Like, a lot of people feel betrayed. So, the Hall of Fame is so wait, that's, basically bogus that's because those guys aren't different, in. right? Like, we felt like we were duped by, or a lot of people feel like you're duped. Like, what I was watching wasn't real because these right. guys were so enhanced. This Olympics would take that out of it. You know exactly what you're watching. I'm just saying, I think this is the absolute wrong way we want to be going here. Like, we already know that steroids are an issue, in, that steroids exist in professional sports and college sports. We're not naive to this. But why would we celebrate that fact? Aren't we trying to get this stuff as cl more out of the game than we are into the game? But are you talking about, you're talking about ethics. Uh, let's talk about entertainment, though. Yeah, ethically, we don't want this, but... Is it going to be entertaining? I think it's a different question. Well, that's, but you have the WWE, those guys, I think, and women have to take a lot of stuff. There are other ways you can get your entertainment to have this. I, I just, what, 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 your entertainment value, you're going to watch somebody on steroids run the, run the hundred meter dash. What what is interesting about that? Team? I don't. First of all, I don't find unless you say bolts running. I don't find the hundred meter dash <laughs> okay. interesting. Anyway. What do you want to watch then? Which, but which but Olympic I think sport? I think what you're saying is that it's wrong. You know, there's something morally wrong with this. But to celebrate this, right? But I think, and I've we argue about this all the time. Sports, real sports fans have zero interest in the moral compass at all. It doesn't mean a single thing to them. Oh, they don't. They don't I'm, care. I'm they just want to see great sports. It. They want to see great... Yes, it's horrible for young athletes to get this message that steroids are okay. It's terrible. We cannot promote that. It's totally uh, irresponsible. But as a sports fan, what do you care what these people are doing? It's just, they're just on your TV for entertainment. Okay, but that just because I... Well, I'm not going to watch this. But accepting a sport despite the fact that it has flaws, and I'd rather know about those flaws when I'm watching and then make the decision as opposed to being totally blind. Like, you take concussions, for example. I know now, and I do, there is a degree of guilt about watching when guys get these big hits, but at least I, I understand and they understand what they're signing up for. 
it hasn't eradicated it, but I'm glad I know, as opposed to the 80s when they were hiding all this but, information. Right, so you, we had so no James, clue. You, basically you're saying, I want to know about the steroids. I, so that's an argument for the tainted Olympics. No, but I don't want the steroids in. I don't want them. I don't want to be watching but at least you know, up. But at least you know. But I think there's one major difference, though, is that when it came to, if you take baseball, for example, like, okay, those guys, they were using steroids or whatever, but we knew those guys were still the best baseball players. Like, these guys mm. can't cut it in the Olympics. That's why they're doing this crap. Mm. These guys couldn't make the Team USA running team or the swimming team or whatever these other enhanced games are. I'm watching scr uh, Scrubs take steroids to think that they are Usain Bolt or Michael Phelps. Right. That part of it Do they is deserve the me. platform? Right. Wow. Bogus, you look, you look befuddled. Yeah, I, I um, specifically, I, I don't, I, I disagree with, I mean, Maggie and I are sports fans and we both all have different varying cares about the ethics of the game. Like, you, like concussions. You're a like minority. I, you honestly. I, well, <laughs> maybe, but like, I'm not, it's not 2% of us. I don't think so. I think if you're a football team, who's your team? Uh, the, the Giants. Giants. The Giants. Like, if they had a, an ethically challenged player who helped them win games, I don't believe you, Andrew Bogish, would, would have a problem with it. I think at the end of the day, well, winning I mean, is so more important than I mean, than you're ever. wrong. Like, I didn't like the fact that the uh, Mets brought Jose Reyes back after he had a domestic violence incident. Like, I don't... Yeah. It's little stuff like that. Like, I... You wouldn't notice it, but I've never mentioned Joe Mixon's name in an update. Mm. Because I don't want to mention Joe Mixon's name I, in an update. I think you're like, in a minority. I'm, I, I'm, not, I, I, yeah. I'm fine. Right. I might be in a minority, but I don't think that... the I, You said a blanket statement that nobody cares. If you're a real sports fan, you don't care. People care. I know one thing. I mean, as a Knicks fan, when Miles Bridges was going through his issues and there was thoughts that, hey, will the Knicks be interested in Miles Bridges? I know for a fact I would have went scorch earth if they would have signed him. Yeah. Well, the other part, though, okay, you guys are talking about, um, just to play devil's advocate, you're talking about people who have done things to other people that have hurt them. Joe Mixon, unforgivable. Well, what Miles Bridges did, unforgivable. This is your body. Well, I mean, yeah, there's except, a lot yeah. of, hey, if I put steroids in my body, now I'm, I'm making a case against my argument, but just for devil's advocate's sake, no. does it matter if it's just, hey, it's me? I don't like it. I still think it's bad. Sends a wrong message. I've got a teenager in my life who, a family member who loves lifting weights and stuff and asks me questions about steroids, and I, I, I don't want him to go down that path. So there's a real thing here. I'm not saying, oh, what about the children pearl clutching, but kind of when it's well, in your yeah. life. That's the ethical issue here. It's not, forget their own body. It's right. the message to young people can really get hurt with that stuff. That's why it's important. Right. Probably more important than a lot of things we talk about. But I disagree. I mean, Tyreek Hill's in NFL commercials, guys. I, I think you're, I, I think people who yeah, are on the show, I, don't, I, don't, I, people, and I don't I'm like just that. Saying, I think yeah. the large majority, is, there's a reason he's in those commercials, because a large majority of sports fans are willing to put that to the side and separate the athlete okay, from the behavior. So, and I'm not saying it's right, but, but I no, think that's but reality. I, I think the point, point, though, it's not nobody. It's not everybody right. is fine with Tyreek Hill, these guys. Like, I think there are a lot of people, they're not Ooh. the loud majority or a loud minority, but there are a lot of people who look at Tyreek Hill, look at these guys and say, I don't want any part of it. There's a reason well, why that, Miles Bridges... Well, the ratings go up by 3% no, no, every no, year. But see, the, I don't think there's anybody who does see, that. See, that's a tough part, though. Like, say you're a Ravens fan with Ray Rice or Pittsburgh Steelers fans with Ben Roethlisberger. Like, it's hard. You, you, in some ways, you get put in a tough position as a fan because, say, I don't like Ben Roethlisberger because of what happened in his past, but I still like the Steelers. Can't I like the 95-8% of the guys who are really good guys who are on the team? I, I just I don't want to root for one guy, but that doesn't mean I have to throw out yeah, all my fandom. Right. You can watch a game that Tyreek Hill or anybody else like that is in then not watch it because he's like you can watch it and not like that he's involved in it. I I it's hear not a one of the I totally understand, and that's the way it should be, but I don't think that's the way it is. I think Tyree Kill is generally worshipped as a great athlete. Yeah, and and there are certain guys where it's disappointing that that's the case. But I just and I mean I'm arguing semantics like I normally do. You said nobody cares. People uh, care. Not enough of them care to make a difference. Well, that gets right. back but to the Tainted Olympics. I, I think the Tainted Olympics could work because people don't care about the ethics. Like, I think generally the large majority of viewing sports fans do not care. They would just be curious about what it is. I mean, yeah. listen, it's fascinating. It's given us something to think about. And again, if you haven't heard, it's a uh, Olympics that's being put on, Olympic events that are being put on without any kind of drug testing. Right. Maybe, right? I mean, there is an idea still, I think. I don't think it actually has... Is it going to... I thought like, 2025. I thought this I was, was like their target. Karloff has been training guys for yeah. weeks about this. I also don't <laughs> understand how this is allowed, like how you can have medical supervision, because most of these things you're not supposed to be taking or right. taking them for... Like, no doctor will let you take <laughs> growth hormone if you don't need growth hormone. Is that so, right? 
Yeah, you you yeah. Can, a doctor almost like is not supposed to let you take or do things to you that you don't need. Yeah. Like you're not fixing something or addressing something. If you're just doing it to have bigger muscles, like a doctor should not well, sign off on that or right. tell you that it's, it's okay. Funny because sometimes we've heard this like for celebrities and stuff that they'll take human growth hormone just to look better. Right. I don't, it's not like Botox where you just go, you know, to your dermatologist, they'll shoot it. But I do think it gets used for cosmetic stuff. Right. I mean, and, and I don't that, think it's good, by the way. But, but also, yeah. there's a difference, I think, between like knowing which doctor plays fast and loose with his prescription pad right. and then having doctors overseeing like an official event that's going to involve lawyers and right. money and Why would business you stake your and, reputation on that? Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know. I no. mean, first of all, it's. Can't we just have a little fun with this tainted Olympics? You guys are making <laughs> no. it into. Why well, it's got to be and so by serious? Way, I, I hope Some of us have souls. I hope it does happen, and I I guarantee you guys will at least do a drive by. You're not I curious at all. I guarantee you, I will not. Not even the slightest bit curious. Well, nope. one, one quick thing before. Uh, one quick thing. I, I people knew this was going on in the '80s and '90s. They didn't want to know that it was going on in the '80s and '90s. That's exactly what happened. Everyone. I, I, I mean, how do it's obvious. How do Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa hit all these home runs and shatter records that haven't been shattered in in, in decades? Uh, it's there's something going on. There was I was when I played football in middle school. The the coaches had on the wall for creatine and all these other enhancers. It was people in knew. middle school. Yeah. Jeez. Well, creatine is perfectly legal, but yeah. But 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 it was not if right. you're twelve. No, not for, <laughs> not for, yeah. not for the students. It was for it was for. You know the uh, the coaches that were in the in the locker room, but like it, it, people knew. We just didn't want to know. This is funny. They're like, I'm on their website now, and I, I, they're talking about. I was like, you can click on something called enhanced inclusive language. I'm like, all right, well, what do we do now? We're what are we doing here? We're going down a different type of path, and it's about the language of what's natural and what's real, uh. <laughs> not the other kind of inclusive By conversations way, we have. All your favorite players have definitely done something. You. I mean, there's a certain player in the a certain sport who's excelling at a very old age. You don't think he's doing something? You don't think LeBron has ever dabbled? Or, I thought you were about to say Roger. I'm just the saying, like, science? every every athlete's playing a 45 now. You don't think any of them are well, cheating on listen, the side? If Rogers was actually taking something, he'd be the ultimate hypocrite because he's all plant based medicine. Oh no, no, I meant know. like, <laughs> isn't it weird that LeBron's scoring 30 points a game at? at 40 years old. I'm just saying, whatever. There's some science going to all these players lasting forever. There, yeah, I don't know if it's illegal. illegal. Science. Right. I mean, I mean, we, Blood do, spinning, we, we know do we that. not know more about how to say, stay healthy these days I'd than we did 25 years ago? 50% of the NFL probably takes something illegal. I would bet. Okay. I mean, you don't, you don't think? I'm, there's always people cheating. The number, the percentage, I have no idea on. 50% seems farther than I would want so, to go. He's wild to me. According to this website, they're saying they're saying the people who are doing this tainted Olympics, 44% of athletes already use performance answers. Uh, right. This, that's professional athletes, college athletes, high school athletes. They don't say. Yeah. Olympic where, athletes, yeah, where are they getting these numbers from? I don't know. But, but, <laughs> and, and what does that Hill, mean? Because like a greenie is a performance enhancing drug. Yeah. Like, right. Caffeine could be. Is yeah, LASIK surgery oh, that? I, I was actually reading our friend John Wertheim from uh, 60 Minutes and Sports Illustrated, big tennis channel, yeah. big tennis guy. He said the dirty little secret of tennis players is uh, Adderall. Right. Uh, tennis Perfect. players all taking Adderall mm. without having any kind of ADHD or needing it yeah. at all. And I'm sure, by the way, there's something that's perfectly legal and not dangerous that a lot of... I mean, the science they have access to is crazy right now. I assume blood spinning, you mentioned. There's got to be a million things they're doing to, to last. These guys are ridiculous athletes at 42. Okay, poll question. P Tainted Olympics, yes, no. Are you in or are you out? At Maggie and Pearl on Twitter. Bogish, thank you so much. Appreciate that. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. We get back to the least complicated sport ever, football. We do that. I kid. We do that next. Maggie and Pearl. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remain.
four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. So we've been talking about this new idea for an Olympics that there's no drug testing. It's not our idea. Some rich people are putting it together, trying to. We're really split on this as a show. Bilotti and Perloff are interested in this idea. Hey, let's get it out in the open. See what's happening. Maybe a little morbid curiosity too. EJ, myself, Bogish, absolutely loathe this idea. Let's go to David. He's in Dallas. David, you like this idea as well. The uh, we'll call it the tainted Olympics. Well, let me tell you why exactly, and it's not necessarily on the moral grounds. It's on the knowing what's going on. How different is this 
the NIL being allowed in college sports, where now we know who's being given money. Right. How is that any more different? We, instead of the NCAA chasing and the all three investigators for the entire NCAA trying to chase it down and take it five years to figure out, now if, you know, somebody, the Bill Smith Mercedes wants to give a guy a Mercedes for coming to Alabama, he can have it. Right. Um, are these the same thing though? Are we talking about apples to apples? Because here's the thing, the player, thank you for the phone call. You can play college football with the NIL money or without it. With this tainted Olympics, you better be doing drugs, man, or else you've got no shot. Also, I mean, you won't, you won't drop dead of a heart attack from a hundred thousand dollar NIL deal. Well, that's part of it too. The, the, the different stakes, if, if you if you will. I, I didn't see the apples to apples there, but I appreciate it. I mean, also, you guys are sounding kind of naive. What percent? The Olympics obviously has had years and years of major, oh major gosh. doping problems. Totally. Look at uh, Lance Armstrong and bicycle racing. There's been widespread PED use of the sports we've been watching. Okay, but, So you can't ignore that. Okay, but again, I think most people would want to move more towards a fairness thing. So say you don't even want the ethical part of it, but at least like, like putting your body or the message it sends to kids. Don't you just want a fairness, like that you are competing on an even playing field? And the thing about Lance Armstrong, I mean, he benefited from steroids, but has their guy been more publicly shamed? Right. Those guys are disgraced. Yeah. Like, like again, I mentioned Ben Johnson. You mentioned Lance right. Armstrong. Uh, Marion Jones, like we don't look at them and say, "Oh, those 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 guys are awesome," or like right, they right. got a bad rap. It's yeah. like, no, they they got everything <laughs> yeah. that was coming to them. Yeah. But you said, Maggie, that you want fairness. So I think the, these tainted Olympics, that's what you get. You're getting fairness, or at least it's an open open secret that you're taking them. So that is, in a way, is more fair than what we've had our entire sporting lives. Is we don't really quite know is what's it, going on. I don't think it's fair when you do the tainted Olympics because it's just who has the best doctor then. So who who, right, who but came I up mean, with the best concoction of stuff? It has nothing to do with your natural ability, right? Yeah, but I mean, you can look at. We really didn't know what we were watching in the Olympics when Ben Johnson won gold, for example. Right. We had no idea. So at least it's open and compared to this general idea, like, wow, that guy's super fast. I wonder if he's taking anything. You have no clue. That's true. And we're talking about this idea of uh, the Olympics that they're trying to get going. Olympic sports that uh, have no drug. Type. So you can just do and take whatever you want. But if you ask me, which way should we go with this? Should we go more towards still trying to get drugs out of the sport and performance engine out of the sport? Or you just want to say, ah, eh, open the floodgates. Let's have a free for all. I'm still going to move towards yeah. the let's get the drugs out of the sport. I understand it. And by the way, just by saying that Pete and I want to watch this Tainted Olympics doesn't mean that we want we want everybody to take PDs in all sports. Oh, no. you guys want but that's druggies? A, says they just but shoot them up. The thing is, over. I feel like you'd rather have your head in the sand and watch the 2024 Olympics in Paris, knowing full well that there are people there cheating and just ignoring it. There are, but... At, and I am not naive, but they are putting in, it feels like a rather robust drug testing. Um, <laughs> I, Get out of here. I think the athletes would tell you, you have to be in a certain place. If you oh miss the drug test, God. it's considered a fail. Well, that I disagree with you. I think every every big time athlete who wants to avoid a test can do it. I well, mean, how many guys are actually getting caught in baseball? And the way they get caught is so stupid. Like, it's usually like a male thing or well baseball and maybe football i don't know how much they really want to catch guys yeah yeah i agree with but that the olympics i think they really do i don't know i mean didn't they just get rid of the entire russian country because they were all using steroids like that documentary is bananas by the way what's it called the icarus uh, yeah 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 the Oof. That yeah, one is yeah about they, the they come down, the and, and then you know, Conor mcgregor he wants to get back into you know ufc but he's basically ducking the drug testing like he won't he won't commit to doing whatever that cause US US I hate does, the way UFC does this. Yeah. Because they allow the testosterone replacement therapy and the bar for that I think should be a lot higher, yeah. my personal opinion. Especially when you're kicking and punching somebody yeah. in the yeah. face. Those are the the combat sports are really the ones you want clean. But that Icarus documentary, one thing science is way ahead of where the regulators are. That is always the way I don't think anyone's really clean. Coming up, Jim Harbaugh gets introduced as the new L.A. Chargers head coach. His lofty goals for the organization. We'll get to those next. You're in a five-minute break.
Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. He's the reigning Fortnite champion. She's a Call of Duty legend. 
They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. One thing has stayed consistent, Perloff, since the NFC and AFC Championship games concluded. The 49ers are the favorite going into the Super Bowl. Welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. And listen, the Niners have had an awesome season. Of course, they find themselves in the Super Bowl. However, Mm -hmm. you do have Patrick Mahomes on the other side. I know the weapons aren't as multiple and the depth on the offensive, uh, you know, depth chart are not as as deep as the 49ers. But, geez, you have the great equalizer and the greatest quarterback of this generation. Well, we don't learn from our mistakes because the Chiefs were four-point dogs to the Ravens. Uh, I just It's hard to erase what you saw in the middle of the season where the Chiefs actually go out and lose to a bad Raiders team on Christmas. Yep. That's not that long ago. And I think we have this image of the 49ers just rolling the Cowboys, rolling the Eagles, and their offense looking great. And then there's this thing in our head where we see the names on defense and we're like, they should be awesome. They got Nick Bosa. They got Fred Warner. These are Hall of Famers. So I think it's hard to come to grips with the reality of who the Chiefs are and who the Niners are. Okay, but what's interesting about that is I understand the public goes one way with their thoughts, and it's hard to break out of your reputation sometimes for sports, right? And we can see the Chiefs, and we know they're a defense-first team, but it's hard to get yourself out of the Mahomes-Kelsey, you know, offense crazy. So, but... The public isn't the only people who are betting on this game. These are sharp bettors. These are people who really... I would say know what they're doing and are winning at a much higher clip. And still the money keeps balancing out here for every chiefs bet you're getting two on the 49ers. So it's just interesting to me that the Mahomes aspect alone doesn't count for more in this Super Bowl, and the Chiefs' defense alone doesn't count for more. I honestly, I, I would say the Chiefs' defense more than Mahomes. Yeah. What it, Mahomes does not want to be Patrick Mahomes of 2019. He does not want to throw it all over the place in this game, right? Because he knows he doesn't have these weapons. I think it's the greatest credit to Patrick Mahomes is that he's not a high yardage, high touchdown quarterback right now. Who's it remind you of? A guy who sort of put his own uh, stats secondary to team winning. It reminds you of Tom Brady. I think this is what the greats of all time do. Say, you know what? I could throw a 50-50 ball to a receiver going down here. Uh, I might get a touchdown out of it, but do I really want to risk an interception when my defense is playing this well? He has put himself second to the team, and it's an incredible credit to him. And I think that's why Kansas City is so dangerous right now. Yeah, it's funny. You look at the offensive weapons for the 49ers, and it's easy to fall in love. I mean... Even if one guy doesn't have it going, you've got multiple other guys to go to. We just talk about the top, like, you know, McCaffrey and uh, Debo and Brandon Ayuk and Kittle. I mean, how about Juwan Jennings making huge plays in the FC Championship game? How about Kyle Juszczyk keeping drives alive, tiptoeing along the sideline, ballerina style? I mean, it's... uh, Elijah wow. Mitchell. I'm just saying, you have Chris Connolly <laughs> made one of the biggest catches in the postseason for the 49ers. Okay, that was you, in the Green you, Bay game. I love Kyle Juszczyk, but you're not losing sleep if you're Kansas City over Kyle Juszczyk. I hear it. Everyone has to be accounted All for. All that being said, there's really one guy here. And even as great as Debo is, as great as Kittle is, you have to look at Christian McCaffrey being on that side of the ball. I, I think Christian McCaffrey might be the main reason that San Francisco is favored. I think people think if he can get off, they can keep the ball out of Mahomes' hands. I, I, maybe that's why it's two point. They have guy who you thought really should have been a strong running for their MVP. Yep. Uh, so yeah, and where Isaiah Pacheco on the other hand is good, but he's certainly no Christian McCaffrey. So I think you and I have disagreed about this. I don't see it as a quarterback battle. Honestly, I think McCaffrey versus Pacheco is where this game comes down to. Eight five five two one two four CBS. John is in San Francisco. Uh, has a thought on the Niners. Hey John, how are you? Yeah, I agree with you guys both. I I don't understand how they're favored by two, and I'm a Niner fan for, for my life, but I, I definitely think it'll even out towards uh, you know towards game time for sure. So you think it's going to be a pick em by game time? And pretty much come close. I mean, because a lot of the money comes in late, yeah. plus it's in Vegas, so everyone getting there by the end of the week, it'll, you know, it'll definitely be close, if not the other, you know, Kansas City giving up one or two. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a lot of people want to wait for the final injury report and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, you got that right. John, was there something else you want to talk about, too? Yeah, I just want to, like, I know Cam Newton has been making this press run all over the place saying he's he could be a quarterback on 10 different teams. The problem <laughs> is, is nobody wants him because he's a prima donna 
that he might dress cool, I guess, on his com- on his podcast. But for someone who who doesn't go after a ball in the Super Bowl that he clearly could have got, like that is known. Mm-hmm. That's around the league, and the fact that he he's just not a likable guy with his teammates. Interesting. You can't have a leader that won't lead by example unless you're awesome. Interesting. John, thank you for that. I, I had not seen that quote that Cam said he could still play for 10, play, 10 teams. I know he yeah. still thinks he can play. I don't think it's about how Cam dresses. I don't think it's about how Cam dogged it on that play in the Super Bowl. I think it's just he doesn't have the ability anymore. Well, he's one of those guys. Do you know how old he is? Oh, probably younger than I think. Yeah, like and he, there's two guys that are great mysteries to me why they're not NFL quarterbacks right now. Cam Newton's 34. So, and how old do you think Robert Griffin Jr. is? The third, you mean? Robert Griffin the third. <laughs> I always get Robert Griffin Jr. the third. Um, is he thirty? Is he thirty four? He's thirty three. Why are these guys out of the NFL? <laughs> I it doesn't make any sense. It's never made any sense to me how they fell off so quickly. Maybe maybe that call is right. Maybe he's not like well liked by his teammates. I I don't know. I'm not in the locker I think room. he is well liked by his teammates Cam? though. I think uh, Cam was a leader. Yeah. I I uh. always thought I didn't think that people had a problem. Listen, you want to go back to that Super Bowl in 2015? Yeah, he got flack for that play. The ball's on the ground. He stood there. Cam is always... I've heard Cam has had an interesting personality. He's always been a bit eccentric. Yeah. I don't think he's uh, as easily relatable to everyone, you know. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe... What, so why is he not good, though? Because he was good for five years ago. He was really good. I know, but we watched it. We watched it in New England, but he that said was he was New hurt. England. Yeah, he was clearly hurt. And then we watched it again in Carolina. Now, again, it's Carolina, but... Maybe there's, there was one thing that Cam said a, a couple of years ago. This is funny that we're on a Cam Newton thing, but uh, that Cam said a couple of years ago, he said, I'm too like big of a star to be a backup. Not not saying I shouldn't be yep. a backup, but just saying that's the reality of that's it. it. I, I, take a, I get a lot of attention. That's absolutely it. So you ha- you can't bring him in unless he's a starter. That's got to be why. I have a theory as well, too, especially with Cam and with Robert Griffin. I think part of it is because if when those guys were stars, when they were starting in the NFL – I mean, they were running offenses that were very different than the offenses all, all other 32 teams were running. If Cam Newton's going to be your backup, teams want their backup quarterback to be running what the starter runs for the most part. You don't want a guy, if you're Kyle Shanahan, you say, okay, I have Brock Purdy's my starter. I got can't, Now I bring in a Cam Newton who's on a West Coast Shanahan-style quarterback. It doesn't make sense. Like I need to be running spread college-style stuff, and if that's not – what you're doing on the first level, then you can't. You're not going to bring in Cam Newton. Like, I know, that's the reason why Snoop Huntley works in Baltimore as a backup because yeah. he fits seamlessly with Lamar Jackson's offense. Well, RG three was pretty good at Kyle Shanahan, so that I mean Shanahan has had success with those guys. But right, you're but right, it's totally. But different uh, than what that's he's doing why RG three was in Baltimore. I mean, you you nailed it exactly. Right. That's why RG three was there for three years. I think. Yeah. yeah. Behind, but. Uh, I don't know that Cam, Cam could probably run a lot of different offenses. I, thinking, I don't think it's that hard. I, if you're backup, at least he could run. That's something, right? Well, I was thinking, like, Cam could always be Josh Allen's backup. I mean, that's true. Josh Allen doesn't exist if Cam Newton doesn't exist. I, I, I really think that. But, I mean, Josh Allen really is a one-of-one, one, though. Like, there aren't a lot of those opportunities. Like, should he be the backup of the Buffalo Bills? I mean, probably. I don't know. Kyle Allen, he's still there, right, Kyle yeah. Allen? He's fine. I mean, whatever. But are there... 31 other options that make sense compared to how Buffalo and Josh Allen plays. Like, like Cam Newton is not going to be... Indianapolis, maybe, besides, behind Anthony Richardson. I, I'm just saying, yeah. there are guys yeah. who... Cam Newton was a game changer in his defense. We're talking about Cam Newton now. A caller said, uh, thinks he's not being signed because he's a prima donna. He's had a lot of things to say about Brock Purdy. Uh, you know, Cam as a media member is definitely, you know, gets a fire going with people. For sure, he's a lightning rod. I I don't know. I wouldn't put words in Cam's mouth. Does he want to go be in Buffalo to be a backup for Josh Allen, who, knock on wood, never misses a game? Like, now you're just sitting in Buffalo. But Do you want to be doing that? I don't know. Maybe he does. Buffalo's obviously, they have Matt Barkley for it. They had Case. They have uh, Kyle Allen. Like, they have no interest in getting a clone of Josh Allen behind them. Clearly not, right. Also, I I actually, like, I understand what you're saying about the system, but I do think there's maybe value to have your backup quarterback be a little bit of a mix-up because you can't prepare for him. I I don't think there's that side. I... Who is the best backup this year? Joe Flacco. He came in. He has nothing to do with Deshaun Watson. Wasn't even a backup. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. He wasn't the backup. Yeah, right. He was, came was, in. And, oh, whatever. Was, he signed. Gardner Minshew like, probably the best, and he doesn't play like Anthony Richardson at all. So presumably, Stefanski had an offense in Cleveland for Deshaun Watson, and it worked. Whatever it did, then they brought in Joe Flacco, who's the exact opposite, and it worked. But so, it's because they tried DTR and uh, and 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 PJ Walker, PJ Walker yeah. guys who are more similar to Deshaun Watson in their in their yeah. in their time. They're not as good as Deshaun Watson, but they. 
the same profile. It's like uh, uh, they're yeah. not Joe Flacco is not like those other two guys. Yeah, those guys actually, are much closer to Deshaun. Deshaun's yeah. actually closer to Joe Flacco than I think Deshaun's a thrower too. I mean, he's way more of a thrower than DTR. We have, we've oh, never seen DTR. I mean, pass DTR yet. can he can he can sling it. I think. Yeah, he can. Well, it. I, I mean, if Deshaun, whatever. whatever who yeah. can, my point is, there's no science to this. I understand that thing with Lamar has to have a mobile backup, but you could make if Cam was going to be a team player and and really said, "I'm going to be humble and I'm coming here and back up." I think he could get a job. I I think he kind of has said that, but I don't know if if everyone else can. You know, you got the former number of overall, overall pick, Heisman Trophy winner, MVP yeah. of the league. Kind of you. rare you get those people as backups. Now, listen, Joe Flacco is a former Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. He's. I mean, look, Anthony Richardson got hurt and Gardner Minshew went on a hot streak. So who knows? I mean, those two guys, they're like, literally exact. Off. How about Jalen Hurts? Uh, Cam could do run that offense, presumably. Although there's a new offense. I don't know. I, I think this is, I think that call is right. I think it's attitude and him being too big a star. 855-2124-CBS. Can we um, get some poll results, please, yeah. about... Uh, the 49ers question? Okay, well, in the 49ers question, we asked earlier in the show. Uh, well, actually, we didn't have a 49ers question. We had Bill Belichick question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so, Bill Belichick, we asked, there's a very interesting result here. Will Bill Belichick be a head coach in the NFL again? This comes from Marlon Humphrey being like, no NFL team's one of them. I guess he ain't the greatest coach of all time. So, will he coach again in the NFL? 50.7% say no. 49.3% <laughs> say yes. I know some of you guys give me crap for going to the decimals, but I actually had to <laughs> yeah. for that one. Um, and then early later in the show, uh, just not that long ago, we asked, the Enhanced Games is proposing an Olympic-style event in 2025 where the athletes will be allowed to use performance-enhancing substances. So, would you watch? 61% say no. 38% say yes. Interesting. You can go to Maggie and Pearl on Twitter. You can vote on those polls. One quick thing about the Belichick part of this. Let's not forget, and I, and I think teams are going to regret this, right? I do think Belichick is still a good coach. I don't think that uh, – I think it's wild and bad that he doesn't – not bad, but I, I think it's disappointing that he doesn't have uh, an opportunity this year. A lot of teams passed on Brady, too. Mm-hmm. And how many of those teams live to regret it? And one of them is playing in the Super Bowl right now. I think San Francisco passing and other teams, Brady saying, I'm available, and them saying, thanks, but no thanks, we're mm-hmm. going to stay with our guy. That ended up being a grave mistake, and I could see Belichick in the same way. Because yeah. Brady looked bad at the end of the four, uh, at the end of the Patriots tenure too. Not that bad. I mean, there his, was 12 last, his last throw in Foxborough was a pick six. Yeah, but I mean, they were still a really good team because of Brady. I don't know. Four mediocre years from Belichick. I don't agree with you. I don't feel like teams are going to look but back. But you know on this. that happened. That people passed on Brady. And oh then no, that, you're absolutely right. And people did. It. People did. I, I mean, listen. Why nobody offered Lamar Jackson this offseason? It's going to go down, and, and maybe there was more going on there with guaranteed contracts or whatever. The yeah, they regret it. I don't know. I don't feel like they're going to regret Belichick like they did Brady. I, I maybe I'm being ageist, but I, I don't think Belichick is going to have great success. I do think. But I'd vote yes. He coaches again. But I don't think he's gonna. I don't think it's gonna work. He's gonna be seventy three. Where? Tell me where. Dallas. Dallas has major problems uh, coming forward. They have. They are going all in this year. They're gonna ruin whatever chance Belichick has in two years. <laughs> Tell you what, the Dallas Cowboys start one and five. Oof. I want to know. Well, yeah. they'll kidnap Belichick. Bill Belichick. They're, not going, they're, <laughs> they're not going one and five. Da- I mean, Dak's saying. still really good, and Micah Parsons is there. They're fine, but. I don't know. I, I just don't think this is going to be an easy fit. If he'd gone to Atlanta, you guys are way too... Or he'd gone to Carolina. I mean, it would have been bad. Washington? Carolina didn't even interview him. Yeah, they shouldn't have because they need they need a different coach. And Bill Belichick needs to come to a ready-to-win team, and the team is not out there. Coming one, up, sorry, yes. one question on that, though. Does yeah. that... I mean, does that... Is that a, a knock on Bill Belichick that he can only succeed if he's with a ready-made team? It's if, how, you, if you are the greatest coach of all time, I mean, you should be able to take the Panthers and make them respectable. But it's how old he is, I'm saying. I like, got you. It's not a time frame. You have Dave Canales. Presume, I think they're, these young coaches, Mike McDonald got six years in Seattle. Right. They're like, we're going to give you all the rope to build a team. You can't do that with Belichick, can you? 855-212-4CBS. 855-212-4227. All right, we got Jim Harbaugh news. He's making some big promises with the L.A. Chargers. Will he be able to deliver on these promises? We get to the former Michigan coach next. It's Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break.
Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. <laughs> yeah. This is the most stressful day of the year for Andrew Perloff. 
today's the most stressful day, the game doesn't isn't for a week. Friday before Super Bowl week, that means I have to pack and pick five outfits for Super Bowl. And I and when I five say outfits, costumes. I mean not just Bogus clothes. Bogus is getting up to leave. Outfits. Bogus, <laughs> I'm I mean, so sorry. Really? I'm a, and I'm a good whiner, but you're going to complain <laughs> about this is the worst day of the year at the pack for a week in Vegas. You are judged by your Super Bowl outfits, and I don't know how to dress anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> have someone else dress for you. A lot yeah. of sequins, a lot of sparkles, a lot of feathers, a lot of <laughs> I, leather. Mm. The, the uh, Andrew Pro- Proloff playbook. James. James. Lululemon chains. Chains and whips. Uh, whoa, whoa. Maggie and I are coming up with some things we're going to do that are going to be quite embarrassing. Yeah. EJ, you're going to have to be seen with us, too. Which yeah, is yeah. Really bad There's one you. particular outfit that arrived via Amazon. Yeah. I don't know if you had... Well, the it, wig came yesterday. Uh, let's just say that the wig is, is bad. The lower part is very revealing. Yeah, you got to come... So we're both what wearing do I the do? same outfit. You have You can't just go out there... Without anything else on. Well, even you got to put something under that thing. Even man. with underwear, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to tape oh this bad boy. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling well, bad boy. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, media. this is so form fitting. <laughs> this is this is so form fitting. I honestly, I'm gonna have to wear something to protect my private part. <laughs> cap, cap, get your blur, get your blur images ready. Yeah. No, you, could go out, you could go out on the street and, and uh, walk around with that. Just don't send anybody else with you. No, we're just, we're wondering is how funny the story is going to be when Prof gets arrested for indecent exposure and <laughs> have to do the show alone. <laughs> or well, something else. To always... get, arrested in, get arrested in Vegas, we're going to have to go pretty far. Yeah, I think we're there, though. <laughs> You've always wondered what the inside of a Vegas jail looked like. <laughs> well, I do remember the hangover when Rob Riggle's uh, tasing them. <laughs> tasing them. Yeah. Are, we gonna, are we going to end up up, uh, yeah, Bogus Mag- of Life. You're gonna get a call from Maggie out in the desert. We screwed up. <laughs> we screwed, we screwed up. up EJ, where's EJ? I don't know. <laughs> is there a mattress on the roof? <laughs> we don't know where EJ is. Yeah. So if Pete and I are hosting next Wednesday's show, you know what happens. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who is yeah. the most likely person to roofie themselves on the show? <laughs> Put it up as a poll question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we screwed. Uh, I'm. Actually, I don't think he said screwed up, but yeah. Yeah, he, he said the other word. But we can't say. Andrew Bogus but we can, can spell. I'm say sorry. everything. Oh, wait. We want to get to Jim Harbaugh. Can you uh, do a little Jim Harbaugh sound with us? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and also, how dare you? Uh, Jim Harbaugh at the press conference yesterday. Sorry, Bogus. Um, making some really big claims about what he's there to do uh, with Justin Herbert. Los Angeles, Southern California. Uh, they respect talent effort and winning and um, and it needs to be multiple multiple championships uh, and that's we're gonna be hum, humble and hungry uh, but you know that's our goal well multiple championships is what I wanted to take away from that but did is that what they really respect in LA <laughs> I think they respect fame money and yeah I'm lip, about to say lip filler I um, think he had the wrong town in that quote <laughs> well when, LeBron gets a lot of crap only winning one I think I think he's right about that. I, don't I didn't know. think that was crazy. No, I don't. That doesn't see the character of LA when I, you know, famously arrive. Fans arrive in the third inning and for Dodger games. Yeah, I don't seventh. know that they expect. They're like we expect championships all the time. It feels like they're more about the glamour in some extent, not like lunch pail. Listen, I think it's a good goal. I mean, multiple championships. You're putting yourself out there, especially when you compete in the same division as Patrick Mahomes. This is, EJ and I were talking about this before. It's got a little of a Rex Ryan feel when he got hired by the Jets and said, I'm not here to kiss Belichick's rings. He obviously wasn't, he said, we're going to be humble about it. Jim Harbaugh's not putting himself out there like Rex. But he's definitely announcing his arrival here in this division where yeah. Mahomes is on the doorstep of his, you know, third Super Bowl, maybe his third Super Bowl trophy in, in five years and his fourth appearance in this game to come in and say, we're going to win multiple championships when this dude is right in your division, that that's saying something. But forget forget that. What are they actually doing this offseason? I mean, there's there might not be a team with more decisions to make. They have all these thirty something huge contracts and all the basically all they know for sure is they have Justin Herbert. What else on that team do we even know? Is he gonna cut everybody and bring in his own guys? What what is this Dion with the transfer portal? I mean <laughs> they need you all to go hit the portal. Well, think about what is Jim Harbaugh? He's physical, tough, grinding on both lines. I don't know that the Chargers have those dudes on their team, do they? I don't think so at all. Well, it wouldn't be a Jim Harbaugh press conference if things didn't get a little silly. So here's some more for Jim. Had a funny exchange with uh, KCAL's Jim Hill. Coach, this is uh, I'm Jim Hill of KCAL 9 News. Congratulations. 
You're a legend. No, 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 no. You're the legend. You're a legend. No, no, no. You're the legend. You're a legend. Believe me, you're the legend. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> no, you. Go on. <laughs> Oh, you. Jim Harbaugh, <laughs> big fan of Ted Lasso, shocker. Oh, yeah, there's some things I've copied from Ted Lasso. I try, I try to emulate Ted Lasso uh, in a lot of ways. That's that's that TV show, yeah, that's that's one of the best. Jason Sudeikis, uh, you know, tremendous. I got a great story of how I met Jason Sudeikis. Uh, uh, but I think that there's... <laughs> Does he not tell the story? A life lesson oh. in every, every one of those episodes. What's that? We need the Sudeikis story. Piece of advice, if I may. <laughs> Watch the Ted Lasso show. <laughs> which is not a documentary, which he knows, <laughs> but he also wants to emulate Ted Lasso <laughs> as if he's a real person. It's an inspiring story. Jim Harbaugh says he wants to live in an RV near the Chargers facility for the next few months. I want to. I want to drive my RV out. I want to drive my RV out and uh, and and. and go to a trailer park, uh, you know, like down by the water or uh, by Disneyland. There'll be two that I've researched that are close to the facility. And uh, I want to Jim Rockford it for the, uh, <laughs> for the, for the next uh, couple of months until we move to the new facility. That's, I have that thought going through my head. <laughs> Man, if you didn't know it was legendary football coach and former quarterback Jim Harbaugh, mm. him living in an RV by Disney World should probably get multiple authorities on the move. <laughs> Well, why <laughs> he is, if he didn't have the gravitas of the Jim Harbaugh-ness, I'd be like, ah, Delta 9, I, I we've got love, a 180 yeah. on our tail. I also love how he clearly knows nothing about Southern California because he's just like, I want, I want to live somewhere close to the facility in L.A., you know, like Disneyland. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's like two hour away at least. Like, does he know L.A. traffic? <laughs> it's not near the facility? I have no idea. Definitely not. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Where is the Chargers facility now? Is it in the stadium? Like... I think I it's, it's an angle. Yeah, right? I think, I think oh, it's an okay. angle. I think it's it's in El Segundo, right? So yeah, that's nowhere near Disneyland. That's where he comes to New York. He's like, I'm but that's li- not I'm that. That's not actually that. But we were just at Disneyland two years ago. Uh, yeah, that's not a good call. But by the way, <laughs> yeah, Joe Madden does this right. Like, I love the R. I'm jealous of you. You, you want to live in an RV? Don't you guys want to live in an RV? No, but my no. mom's always wanted to do this. Yeah. So if you need a riding bud, Pam is there for you. I have a lot of friends who are who are fantasized about RVs. Like an Airstream. <laughs> yeah, an Air. Yeah. Uh, you know how much those cost? They're, they're a lot. Yeah, but that's a great plan. We, uh, why mm. don't we bring the show in an RV? Sounds like we go to San Antonio in an RV, but Ooh. I'm not allowed to go. <laughs> that will definitely be the road trip I'll be allowed yeah, to go Pete, on. Yeah, take Pete and his friends. <laughs> I got, let's rent an RV for a weekend. Let's all go to San Antonio. No. Yes. <laughs> I'm not doing that with you guys. What? That's, uh, we're neat. We're, I hate road trips. Even in an RV, even if the like it's as nice cool as your dudes. house. Like whatever Jim Harbaugh has got, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like the Madden Mobile. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's a, oh, I man. feel like for me, like four, five hours is my max on a road trip. I can do I can do four and a half. I can't do five. Well, what if you had EJ, an RV? I'm going to be honest. We learned about you today that you're messy and yes. that you think Jalen Brunson's jersey should be in the Raptors. So I think I you're out on future, two accounts. It could be in the, the Raptors. He's on that <laughs> trajectory. Funny, if, we, if we had uh, an RV that just had little Jalen Brunson jerseys hanging from the, <laughs> from the top. Uh, more Jim Harbaugh. He says the Chargers will earn the league's respect. Humble and hungry. I mean, right there. I mean, that's that's where we are right now, humble and hungry, and we're gonna we're gonna respect all our opponents, and we're gonna we're gonna strive that uh, you know we're gonna earn their respect, and uh, we're gonna earn our winning. Yeah, uh, sorry about that one. Here's this one's better. Jim Harbaugh describes what he wants the Chargers to be. He says, "Don't let the powder blue fool you." Tough team, you know, the resilient team, a relentless team, uh, physical team is what we're going to aspire to be. Don't let the powder blues fool you. That's what we're going to aspire to do. <laughs> you think he thought that one up on the way to the facility in the RV? I mean, doesn't Harbaugh, like, he didn't like chicken, right? He, yeah. he might actually really have an issue with the powder blues. I can see that being a thing that he doesn't <laughs> like. He said chickens were a nervous bird, then took it back right. once he got chicken, so maybe he had a thing against powder blue, but not anymore. Um, okay, this is a serious one. Jim Harbaugh... Lining out that he and his coaching staff have to be the best um, in order to get the most out of this group. Actually, let's play cut 12 uh, to be great for Justin Herbert's future. I really think uh, this is a talented group that's been assembled here. And um, that's what's going to motivate. That's what's going to drive. So 
I'm really thinking about my accountability and just, you know, making sure that, that, uh, that I'm, I'm ready, you know, and the things that I tell him are going to be, you know, exact because I've, because I've looked at it and watched it and, um, but, but, but it's going to be, it's going to be a team effort all the way. There you go. Jim Harbaugh's introductory press conference. I, I honestly, I think the multiple championships, the funny stuff with Harbaugh, we get him as a character in the NFL now, which is fun. But the multiple championships, I mean, that motivates me if I'm a Chiefs fan. Like Jim Harbaugh thinks he's coming into in multiple titles. I mean, with the Chiefs. I'll tell you what, I, I heard this and I thought maybe this becomes the Mahomes Chiefs rival we've been waiting for. Mm. Because Harbaugh, and I've been down on Harbaugh, but. I like what I heard. I really did. Uh, he sounded like a guy that felt like it was an obligation to make sure Justin Herbert reaches his full potential. I never felt that with Brandon Staley. I, I've told you guys I, I'm on the show. Brandon Staley was a bozo. Yeah. This guy seems, he's joking all the time, but he seemed very serious in those last two cuts. And I think he knows the challenge that is in the division with the Chiefs. And we're saying, who's the Mahomes rival? Who's the Mahomes rival? Maybe it's these guys. I'm 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 buying stock right now in the Chargers, and I wasn't a week ago. Perloff, you like this hire? Uh, Harbaugh was a no-brainer yeah. because he won in San Francisco. I don't give a rat's ass what he says in his press conference. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing that means less than what a, a coach says in his introductory press conference. It means zero point zero. Of course, he's going to want to say he's going to win multiple championships. But that being said, just the development, the way he develops quarterbacks with Kaepernick in San Francisco, Alex Smith. I mean, this this was by far the best hire. Didn't. We all have teams. Didn't we all want Harbaugh uh, as our coach? I want him on the Eagles. I'll oh, tell yeah. you that. I said right. it before yes. the playoffs even started. Because he's, uh, <laughs> and I kind of agree with you, EJ. He's a great chance be, uh, to rival Kansas City because he's got this different style where he's going to pound the run. He's going to be way different. But that being said, Lamar and CJ Stroud and a lot of other young quarterbacks are in that conference. Are you sure that but, that's going to be so, so easy to get out of here? This is one of those yeah. hires. I said there's a couple things. The day he got hired, so there's a couple things that a head coach can't do anything about really. And that's injuries. It's salary cap hell. And it's a meddling owner. And he's uh, going to have to deal with all three. And that has nothing <laughs> to do with him, but injuries, salary cap, hell meddling owner. The three things that coaches are going to, it just obstacles for coaches. This is, could be one of those hires. It might be great. It might be awesome. And Justin Herbert goes on to be multiple MVP, but it's also one of those hires where it's like, man, this looks great on paper. Like Sean Payton last year. Well, yeah, but maybe, maybe Sean Payton will end up being great in Denver. But any chance you think that Jim Harbaugh is such a strong personality that he keeps the owners at bay? Maybe it's the best chance the Chargers have to keep the Spanoses out of it. And the salary cap, or it blows up spectacularly because Harbaugh is not going to tolerate any kind of meddling. And yeah, and once it's the owner versus the coach, we saw what happened with the 49ers and the and. Jim Harbaugh. I think you're going to see the salary cap thing this year. I think they're going to rip the Band-Aid yeah. and just get rid of everybody. That's hey, what I would do. Andrew Bogus has got some headlines. Hello. Hello again. Headlines are sponsored by Waffles because who wants smooth pancakes or French toast? Waffles. Mmm. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> That's excellent. That was like for French Pete. Toast. That yeah. was for Pete. Thank you. Uh, made... Waffles are the worst of in the power ranking of the breakfast. Oh, come on. There oh, come is. on, Pete, though. Waffles, <laughs> you can't evenly distribute the butter. It's obviously the third between pancakes, French toast, and I, waffles. I like a good French toast, but waffles, uh, don't give them any disrespect. I, but you can't. It's about spreading the butter. Anyway. There's three no wrong choices I from where I sit. No. Be- oh, wait, what about Belgian waffle? Same. Can't spread mm. the butter. It's those rivets. Well, you could put Divots. the butter in, in the batter if you make it. Make the Belgian How about waffles a, together. Fried chicken and waffles and yes. hot things. Oh, that's oh, good. Take me to Roscoe's. Let's go. <laughs> go right back to like, Google. bury me at Roscoe's. Wait, I, yeah. I don't understand. Why are we talking about waffles? Uh, because Pete asked me before if I had a sponsor. I said no. He <laughs> said we should make one up. I said good idea. He said waffles. I said done. And then I just got to what that. you guys doing Mad Libs in the back? <laughs> right. A lot of radio show around here. Pete does a whole other show in my ear during the show. <laughs> I have no doubt. Yeah. Did you have any idea that that would offend Maggie, that you were going to go waffles? <laughs> I thought somewhere along the way it would lead to something. You want takes on breakfast food? I'm your chica. Mm. Uh, maybe he'd rethink this after seeing that Tom Brady and his moobs picture like we did earlier this morning. <laughs> but Robert Kraft, not surprisingly, wishes Brady and his B-Cups finish their career in New England. Tom Sr. recently telling the Boston Globe, Kraft admitted to him that he made a mistake letting Brady leave the organization. Other reporting tells us that Bill Belichick told Kraft Brady was done. The owner believed his head coach and then was irate when Brady won the Super Bowl 
with the Buccaneers. Glad to see everyone's letting that go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, Chiefs guard Joe Tooney still not practicing because of his pec injury, but Andy Reid said yesterday they are not yet ruling Tooney out for the Super Bowl. The Raiders expected to make Cliff Kingsbury their offensive coordinator. Those Patriots giving that position to Alex Van Pelt. He was just the Browns OC but Kevin Stefanski called plays. Theo Epstein is returning to the Red Sox, the former GM reportedly joining the ownership group and will serve as a consultant to the team as well. Donovan Mitchell and his Cavaliers, almost Jalen Brunson and his Knicks. Mitchell steps left, three ball. Bang! Just what the Cavaliers needed, and Donovan delivers. 101-97. 101-97. Cavs by four after the Mitchell three. That's Tim Alcorn. Cavs radio Mitchell scoring 25 in Cleveland's 108-101 win in Memphis. The Cavs have won 12 of their last 13. It is nine in a row for the Knicks. 109-105 over the Pacers. Brunson scored 40 hours after being named an all-star for the first time. Joining him on the East bench are teammate Julius Randle, Jalen Brown, and Tyrese Maxey. 140 to go. Sixers trail by three. Maxey will be on the arc for three. It's good. He ties it at 120. Maxey with another three. His seventh three in the game. <laughs> That's ties Tom. it at 120. A lot of defense. Tom McGinnis <laughs> on Sixers Radio. Maxey finished with a career-high 51 to lead the Sixers out of Utah with a 127-124 win. But Joel Embiid diagnosed with a lateral meniscus injury in his left knee. He remains out through the weekend as they figure out how to treat the injury. Anthony Davis is a West Reserve. He watched the Lakers win in Boston last night, 114-105 without him and LeBron. Austin Reeves scoring 32. Kings forward DeMonte Sabonis probably should be an all-star, maybe over Davis, but he's not, and it's costing him a $1.3 million bonus. Women's number one, South Carolina, ruled through Auburn, 76-54. They're 20-0. The Baltimore Orioles trading for Brewers ace Corbin Burns. He was available because he'll be a free agent next winter and wasn't expected to stay in Milwaukee. Baltimore gives back two young players and the 34th pick in the next draft. And most of you probably missed the NHL All-Star Draft yesterday in Toronto. Singer Michael (laughs) Buble is one of the All-Star captains (laughs) <laughs> and he had a great time. My buddy told me this is just a microdose of mushrooms, and he was lying. <laughs> so I'll be honest, I thought I was in blades of glory for most of the time that I was out there. <laughs> what? Until it sort of settled down, and then I realized, holy <laughs> I'm at the NHL All-Star Game. Um, did, Mag- did Aaron Rodgers just magically <laughs> appear next to him? It's like, and my new best friend, Michael Bublé. His whole thing was bonkers. He had a whole diatribe about his fantasy hockey team. So everybody does think he was on mushrooms. And wow. This was not a joke oh. that he was definitely like tripping on the ice making picks in this thing last night. I believe him. I think yeah. he was definitely took a microdose probably. T- I didn't even know you could take too much of a microdose. Isn't that the whole point? You're supposed yeah. to microdose it. You got to keep it micro. <laughs> yeah. He's macrodose. You're going to yeah. be acting like a loon. Prepping for the drug Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Did they say anything about psychedelics? <laughs> you know, it's... be running backwards. Be uh, that, rather, yeah, watch. you guys are tuned into that. <laughs> now yeah. I'm in. I'd watch a psychedelic Olympics over yeah. PD Olympics. Wait, how about this? The athletes don't know whether you're getting PEDs <laughs> yeah. or whether you're getting psychedelics. The blue pill, the red pill. <laughs> <laughs> They'll figure yeah. it out quickly. Are you don't doing the 100 meter dash? Why are you pretending to swim? <laughs> <laughs> That's a track. For each event, there's two uh, boxes with a question mark. <laughs> You well, which one? The guy doing the broad jump is making a sandcastle in the pit right now. I'm assuming he didn't. He got the LSD. <laughs> is she? Is she? How, well, how good this could be? Yeah. Why, is, why is everybody crying? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, it seems, it seems like the leader in the race has wandered off. <laughs> What's that guy doing with the pole vault? Uh, staring at it. This guy uh, just ran through a wall. <laughs> Now cool. that is a multi-million dollar yeah, yeah. idea. <laughs> the shot putter is quietly weeping in the corner. <laughs> Take which one, wait an hour, and then let's compete. That's amazing. Oh, my God. I think we get, we're get we on to something. Call Peter Thiel. <laughs> why, is, why is that shot putter just eating a slice of pizza? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he got the weed. The sprinter is running backwards. <laughs> uh, 
And by the way, actually, yeah, that'd be even better. And then as an audience, you get to guess which drug they're on. Yeah. That's right. If you yeah. bet on it, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> bet on. Did you get... FanDuel Sportsbook. It's like, he ran fast. Was that PEDs or cocaine? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So Michael Bublé high, and he loves hockey. Oh, yeah. I think he got so high that he had to admit he was high. Like, yeah. You get so messed up, you're like, everybody knows anyway. Right. So I might as well just admit it. Well, I thought he was saying, was he trying to make a point like, oh, my gosh, it's such a dream to be involved in this? No, like, no, no. This was, this was like mid-other answer, and he was just like, P.S. My buddy told me this is a <laughs> micro dose. So like, that was, I think he was in the moment realizing that he had oh. made a mistake. <laughs> That microdose didn't mean handful. <laughs> was this is like fear and loathing? Yeah. Was he Hunter Thompson? <laughs> All of a sudden, it kicks in yeah. right at the worst possible time. Well, Michael, I mean, I wonder if we see him in Vegas. That guy is—he's got a hundred percent cues. Does anyone not? I mean, nobody. Dislikes Michael Bublé. And that was cool. I didn't think that the guys doing all the Christmas songs no. was also <laughs> just yeah. getting high on mushrooms. Yeah. I mean, him you and think Mariah. You know somebody. Him and Mariah probably uh, having a better time around that tree than we know. I have no idea. <laughs> Smoking that tree. It's like lick a frog. By the way, you mentioned Joe Tooney is practice, uh, hasn't practiced yet. Yeah. We haven't talked about the arrival of practice yesterday at the Kansas City Chiefs. Kadarius Tony on the field. Is that going to be the story to watch? I am so excited. I want to make a bet, Meg. I think he's playing. You can go ahead and bet with Vegas on that one. Yeah. I don't. I, you want to bet me? I don't want to bet on that. Yeah, oh, because we it's, are it's doing props, a, though. Oh, we are doing yes. props. But uh, I, I just think that Kadarius Tony is out there on the practice field doing weird things. Like, is this guy going to play? Can anyone tell me? Bogus, you're the update well, guy. Un, unhappy him in Vegas seems like a bad combination as well. Yeah, like honestly, he, is he going to yeah. get in trouble before next weekend? If there were odds on who makes a negative headline <laughs> in Vegas, Kadarius right. Tony's got to be like minus a uh, thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might be Michael Buble's dealer. We don't, he might be <laughs> passing the mushrooms around. What is Kadarius Tony doing at the NHL All Star? Yeah, yeah. You got a game, dude. Live on Radio Row at three fifteen <laughs> on Tuesday morning with Maggie and Perloff. I think I think the Super Bowl will Leave be better. Show. It'll be better if Kadarius Tony is there. Not because the Painted a line? <laughs> no, no. But it'll just be more interesting. Like something. Was he a Niners practice yesterday or a Chiefs practice? I wandered in. <laughs> in the shots in the end zone? <laughs> wandered in Niners practice, somehow got flagged. For well, you know, when he lines up, he's three feet behind where he's standing <laughs> yeah. with the Niners he's and like, wondering, <laughs> hey, why are you guys wearing the wrong color jersey? He's uh, a Michael Niners Blay. defensive end at this point. <laughs> um, Poor Kadarius. Uh, he's all right. 855 212 for CBS. I mentioned props. That maybe that will be one of Perloff's. We're not going to make our picks right now as we normally do on Fridays at this time, but we are going to give you our three prop bets for the Super Bowl. So we got that coming up next. Buy a hat and hold on to it. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining.
Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. and Perloff's NFL Picks. Okay, we're not going to pick the game today, the side and the total, and our one-player prop. Uh, we'll do that next week from Vegas on Friday, Perloff. But today, we want to do something. we got to put something on the line. So how about three other props? Doesn't have to be necessarily a player prop for the Super Bowl. I've got a couple. You've got a couple. Okay. Let's do three each. Uh, I'll start with an obvious one. Okay. I didn't, actually... I, this number strikes me so low, I don't even get it. Patrick Mahomes, first quarter passing, 55 and a half yards. What have the Chiefs done this playoff run? They've just come out with this first 15 plan of Andy Reid and gashed the opponent. I feel like that's their game plan. Uh, I think this is an easy one. For I think he gets 55 to Kelsey alone. <laughs> Which that, almost like that number, that number scares me a little bit. It's so low. Uh, I guess if the Niners command the ball and have a long drive, I... I I'm high on Mahomes early in this game. Okay, I have one similar to that, so I'll do that before my, uh, spoiler alert, my Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey props. Yeah. Um, Same vein and same thought of yours, but taking a step further, I'm going to take the first half over 23 and a half points. I'm going to take that first half total over 23 and a half points just in the first half because I think both of these teams find it very important to get out to a lead. So I think you're going to see aggressive play calling. I think you're going to see, you know, eschewing field goals to go for touchdowns because clearly the Chiefs want to get out to a lead and clearly the 49ers want to get out to a lead so they can both teams want to run the ball. So I think you're going to see an aggressive first half. So give me the over 23 and a half first half over. Yeah, I like I like and it is. It does feel similar to me. All right. uh, My next one. This one I actually, I, I read on the Action Network, a site, and this this is so good, I'm going to have to share it. The longest kickoff return is set at 27.5. Who is, who's kicking the ball in bounds in an indoor stadium in the Super Bowl? There's not going to be a single return. There's uh, there's only been one or two throughout most of the playoffs. I think the indoor stadium, there's going to be no returns. And if there is one, why do we think it'll be over 27.5? That's only, that's even odds. 
one way or the other, minus 115. I feel like bet on long kickoffs. Anything like punts are going to be huge, kickoffs are going to be huge. I have not been in a legion, but the numbers are supposed to be about 5% higher than any outdoor stadium. So this seems easy to me. I already put money on it. Okay. You, can you parlay that with like a number of touchbacks or something like that? Uh, probably. Uh, by the way, just to be clear, I, under 27 and a half. Oh, okay. I, I honestly don't think there's, I'm sure you can bet on the number of returns. It's probably two or three. Yeah. It's not happening. I like that one. Okay. I got two Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey props Hit for me. you. This is courtesy of our friends at betonline.ag. How many times will Taylor Swift be shown live? The over-under is set at five and a half. Now, this is the game. Post-game is something else, okay? This is just the game. So we're not talking about the trophy ceremony. We're not talking about them kissing on the field or whatever's going to happen after the field. This is just shown live during the game. I'm going to go with over five and a half. I think they, they show her six times. Because Kelsey will score a touchdown, most likely. Mm-hmm, so you mm-hmm. get her then. You're going to have to get just that she's in the building. You need an established shot. Taylor Swift is in the building. Of a little course. catnip for the, self, for the Swifties. And then do I think four more times to a three-and-a-half-hour broadcast? Definitely. Yeah. Feels mild. Uh, my wife came home and said yesterday, this uh, three-quarters of America is going to watch this game because of the Taylor Swift uh, appeal. Yeah, you got to be strategic about it. You don't yeah. want to become Brenda Warner, but you got to make sure you show her. I like the over. Yeah. What were the odds on the over? Uh, let me find but, that. But you. yeah, I mean, it feel, feels really slim to me. I wonder if that goes up where the money comes in. Okay, uh, my last one, and this is a little recency bias. I have to invest in Kadarius Tony. He's my favorite player <laughs> in the Super Bowl. The You're this the is only am- one. This is amazing. He's six in odds for having the longest rush at plus twenty five hundred. Now, if Kadarius Tony is going to play, you're not going to put him out on a passing route, Maggie. He's fast and talented. Yeah. You're going to hand that ball off to him, end around, kind of like he did against the Eagles last year in the Super Bowl. Longest rush at plus 2,500, Kadarius Tony. Just put it down. If this pays, I'm going to laugh so hard. <laughs> I mean, you will have called it. Uh, they don't have the odds. Uh, I bet you it's e- I- I'm sure it's even. I'm yeah. sure it's very close to. Does that feel slim to you? Like if I'm so. if I'm the director, I'm cutting to Taylor all the time. All right, what's your third? So my third is also a Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift prop, and again, we'll make our full picks uh, on next Friday. Which will be higher, Taylor Swift live shots, Travis Kelsey catches? So that's a great question because that gets back to your last thing. Will they right. show Taylor if it's not a Kelsey play? Like say Mahomes yes. hits Justin Watson. Do they go to Taylor and celebrate so, it? To me, it's, listen, it's a little rich. It's a minus 200 on Travis yeah. Kelsey with these kind of props. But Kelsey's going to get anywhere from what? 10 to 15 targets? It's the Super Bowl, for goodness sake. Maybe, yeah. So there's no way they're showing Taylor 15 times or 12 times. I think that's going to be a little much. So even though it's really juiced to Kelsey, I think I would put $5 down on this one, you know? Yeah. Um, side one, real quick. You know, it's now plus 1,120, the proposal after the game. You can only do it in Canada right now. <laughs> well, Eddie That's a dumb bet. Eddie, oh, he's got to do it. No, definitely It's the best can. moment. It's the best story ever. This engagement, What's a better story? This engagement's going to be so big, you can't have it be overshadowed by the Super Bowl. Or there, you don't want to share it with the Super Bowl. Ah, uh, if he gets down on his knees... To Taylor Swift after a Super Bowl win is the most epic moment in sports history. <laughs> Thank you, DJ Stewart. <laughs> Thank you to people, Lottie. Thank you to Andrew Bogish and Andrew Kaplan, Guido's coffee drinkers, callers. We'll see you Monday from lovely Las Vegas. You're in a five-minute break.